Bolton. Hello, Kate. Hello. Kate. Hello, yes. Yes, Kate. Right. What I wanted to talk about was, first of all, people have forgotten that when the Labour Party were in last time, they left a note. No money left. No money left. Yeah, well, we haven't got any money no. now either. That was a joke at the time, but go on. Yeah. And then uh, this trust Is also it? made a, a thing that um, if you're a foreigner and you want to buy something over here, you don't have to pay that on it. Now, that's 20% whatever it is. But if why you've... couldn't they have split that and said that's at 20 per uh, 10% for everybody? When you when you're a foreigner and you want to buy something over, you you're not, are you talking about like a shirt or or the company that makes a shirt? No, I'm talking about the fact that she said that there would be no that uh, on foreigners coming across to buy stuff. Right. But why didn't she do ten percent that throughout? Then at least our country could have had a bit of money. People could buy a few more things. Right. right. But tourists, yeah. you mean? Is that what you mean? Tourists? <laughs> tourists. Right. Yeah. Okay. The next thing is that they want to have as soon as possible, and they can do it within the next 12 months, um, a vote of no confidence in, confidence in trust. In the next 12 <laughs> months? I, I'd be surprised if they didn't do it in the next 12 days. Well, I believe they can't do for some reason, some law that they have to do it after 12 months. But that will still give them time for them to show what they want to do. And those mealy mouth conservatives who voted to get her in and who voted to get to hang Boris out to dry, no. it's about time they got the head right. Yeah, B Boris hung Boris out to, to dry. People talk about him like he never did anything wrong. The things that he did wrong he, are too long to listen a brief three-hour show. He is the fault he that he got the yeah. axe. But he had, he had what people wanted. Which was what? He had, he had guts. He had guts? Yes, that, he, he had that's the, the absolute opposite of the truth, Kate. He had no guts at all. He just got blown around like a rudderless ship. No, he did a lot of good. Like? Well, first of all, he got Brexit through. When oh, my God. No, he did not, Kate. Brexit is not done, nor will it ever be done. It will. But, now, no, hang on a minute. You, well, no. you're just you're arguing with yourself now. You said he got Brexit done. <laughs> I said, no, he hasn't. He said he will. So, by your own admission, Brexit is not done. He will complete what he wanted to do, because he's not without a brain. And if he was only there as an advisor... I know that they could He was a, there and a, as an advisor? To no, whom? He was to be an, an, an advisor. He didn't go for it. He didn't go for what? He didn't go to BPM. He didn't go to BPM. He wanted to be the advisor of a prime minister. No, what on earth no, makes you think no, that? No, listen. If he was to come back... No. He wouldn't take that risk. So, but what he could do, he could advise people because he has a brain and he knew. Are you kidding me? He's a back. No, he's 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 going to be in the in the background advising somebody in the spotlight. You don't know him very well, do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> I never met him personally. Oh, well, it doesn't make personally. no. Never mind one way or the other. You you can't possibly be more wrong about him if you tried. He's not going to be the advisor in the background. That's not who he is. He's a spotlight man. <laughs> He doesn't like anybody taking the limelight from him. But just and then, and another when thing, at their com uh, conference, they didn't mention the unions. Well, they think about strikes now. But if they get in again, mm. all these people will be wanting ten percent right, fifteen yeah, percent right. Which is right. quite and right. If if inflation is, if inflation is ten percent, then they the ten percent should be the absolute minimum they get in order to just stand where they are. People don't That's go on strike right, because they like going on strike. They go on strike because they are being screwed by the man, Kate. Oh, we are not being screwed by anybody else, are we? No. <laughs> no, our problems rest within uh, the uh, confines of these islands. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Anyway, uh, Kate, I appreciate the call. Kind of all, all uh, politically all over the place, but, uh, you know, entertaining. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate it. Yeah, I do believe it's all Labour's fault. <laughs>
Thanks a lot, Jeremy Corbyn. See what you've done. Bill! Denby. Hello, Dylan. Hello, Nick. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm great, mate. I'm great, mate. That's a good answer. Right. Now then, so when did you have this conversation with the cow? When did I have a conversation with a cow? Um, mm. Last time I was uh, staring at a Pink Floyd album. Rock and roll! Oh, I was gosh, talking to no, it, but... You're not into them, are you? It didn't talk to me. No. Oh, I'm talking about the hour, of course, and the hours, GMT, BST, and... Yeah. How, how it won't make any difference won't to... Won't make of, any difference. Cows don't know what time it is. So, you, so like, that's why I was asking, how do you know that? Did you, did you t put a cow through a test? No, I put a, <laughs> put a cow through a <laughs> mincing machine <laughs> and it came out delicious. It's a sweeping mm, statement, mm. isn't it? It's a presumption. Right. I it's mean, a, do you, do it's you a keep presumption. It's a presumption. A a it's a presumption that cows don't know what time it is. That cows won't be aware that we put the clocks back. Are you kidding? Oh, are you sure about that? Yeah, I am sure about it. Yeah. How do you know? Explain to me why you think that what I'm saying is wrong. No, I. It's up to you to tell me why you claim it's correct. Because cows don't know what time it is. But how do you know they don't know? <sighs> <laughs> right, it's a pre it's a presumption and it's a sweeping statement. Dylan, do you think cows can read? I don't know. You cl you think they they seem to know that they don't know whether the hour goes back or forwards. Yeah, they don't. How do you know? Dylan, do you think cows <laughs> can read? I don't know. Oh my god, I gave you two opportunities to give me the correct answer and <laughs> You fail both times. You don't know if cows can read. <laughs> wow. Here's a brief list of some of the Tory MPs who have either been accused of doing something that would get them fired from any other position, or have actually gone to blooming jail for doing something that would have gotten them fired from any other position. Almost all of them still in their roles. Serving you, the people. There's the one that was found to have made repeated unwanted sexual advances. There was the one that broke social distancing rules and had to resign after being caught on camera kissing his aide in a ministerial office. Disgusting. There was the one uh, in charge of overseeing the inquiry into lockdown breaches by the government until it transpired that he himself had held a party when it was illegal to do so. <laughs> There was the one that was suspended from the party after a series of allegations relating to sexual harassment and cocaine use. Want to score some pot? No thanks, I'm on the coke tonight. There was the one found, gu found guilty of three counts of sexual assault and sentenced to prison for two years. There was the one found guilty of sexual assault of a 15-year-old boy and sentenced to 18 months in prison. There was the one who sent over 2,000 sexually explicit text messages to two fe female constituents, uh, later found to have raped his wife and subjected her to coercive control. There was the one who resigned after it was found that he had twice watched porn while in the House of Commons. Some of these may ring a bell. <laughs> There was the one arrested for rape and sexual offences who has been ordered to stay away from the House of Commons while the investigation is ongoing. There was the one to have found uh, uh, to have broken lockdown laws and was fined by the police. There was the one who broke the law when he attended a party at Downing Street while it was illegal, as per his own government laws. He was eventually fired in disgrace after he promoted a sex pest. Do we know which the one that is? Um. There was the one found guilty of driving offences, including failure to stop at the scene of an incident. There was the one who resigned after reports emerged he had groped two men at a private club. He had previously resigned for doing the same thing. There was one fired from his position in government after allegations of serious misconduct at the Tory conference. There was the one caught on camera assaulting a peaceful protester. There was the one who lied under oath about his family businesses. He's under investigation for lobbying and failure to declare interests. There was the one arrested in August in 2020 but never charged. The woman he assaulted was hospitalised. There was one found to have sent unwanted sexually explicit text messages forcing him to resign his position. There was one caught on camera assaulting a female protester by grabbing her by the neck. There was one who had to resign after allegations surfaced that he paid a Brazilian male escort for sex and drugs. There was one suspended for one day after she was found to have attempted to influence the outcome of her husband's sexual assault case. There was one suspended for one day after she found to have tried to influence the outcome of the same sexual assault case. 
There was one suspended for a day after it was found that he attempted to influence the outcome of that same sexual assault case. There's the one facing a petition for forced bankruptcy by HMRC for unpaid taxes. There was one reported to have fast-tracked at least one contract worth £276 million down the PPVIP lane. Big money, huge. The person who got that contract, by the way, became a, to a Tory donor. Surprising, no? No. There was one who was f forced to apologise after footage surfaced of him in 2009 flashing his genitalia in a pub. There was the local assembly member who had to resign from a number of positions he held after he was forced to admit that he attended a party at Downing Street in December 2020 when it was illegal to do so. There was one who fast-tracked her own company to a £122 million PPE contract during the COVID pandemic. It also was, was awarded an £80 million contract and she was given a life peerage and sits in the House of Lords. There was the one who let three companies he ran go bust owing money to the taxman. And I've just run out. It's not a political party, it's a crime scene. And nearly all of these people are still Tory MPs. What? Can you believe it? What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. <laughs> I mean, I am stunned. I think uh, Cruella uh, uh, Braverman needs to uh, investigate her own party. Just look at the people behind you, Cruella. You wouldn't believe it. <coughs> I am stunned. I mean, wow. Most of those people still in work as your representatives. Are you stunned yet? Whew. I mean, can there be another organisation in the entire country that has a, a criminality running through it like uh, words through Brighton Rock? There can't be another single organisation in the country that has got that many um, criminal types in it. I mean, good grief. Still, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> it's just life. Oh, isn't it awful? France. France? That's a bit vague. Where are you, Ian? Me? Uh, bonsoir, Nick. Yes, where are you, Ian? I'm in France. Can you narrow it down for us? Yeah, a, a region uh, called Franche Comte, and uh, the village I'm in is La, Ro La Rochelle. Ah, I don't know it well. No, the three in France. There's one on the Brittany coast. There's another one somewhere in the one where I am. That rings a bell, La Rochelle. Why would I know La Rochelle? Yeah, yeah because it's got a famous rugby team and it's a very, very big um, coastal city on the Brittany coast in France. Is it? But that's not where I. Yeah, that's not where I am. I'm in a, another remote area and on the border of uh, the Champagne region and uh, Franche Comté. Mmm, Champagne. Booze. Mm. <laughs> right. But I'm not a Champagne socialist. Okay, glad to hear it. Yeah, me too, yeah. I, I was wanting to address the uh, the curious case of Starmer and Angela Rayner misleading the working class. What do you think? Well, I don't know. Tell me what you... T tell me what it is, um, and then I'll tell you what I think. What, type, what type of socialists would advocate and instruct their MPs not to attend picket lines in solidarity with uh, with workers? Well, um, you know, one, fighting, one fighting that's, for, a, for a legitimate pay rise right, and one, conditions. Uh, one that is trying to get elected at the next uh, next general election. At any cost. At any cost. Are you though? Are you mm. one of those um, lefties who wants to actually lose unless the, the uh, an absolute perfect Labour Party can uh, be put forward? You'd actually stew in the delicious. Um, uh, the delicious joy of losing for another five years just because the Labour Party does not reflect perfection in your mind? No, I mean, there's no such thing as perfection, but I mean, at least have some principle and morals, you know, I mean, it's... Okay, it's here, here it is, Ian. Cho you have a choice. You want the Conservatives or you want Labour? Yeah, but are they Labour? So you want the Conservatives? Yeah. No, I don't want the Conservatives, mate. I'm, 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 I'm a socialist, you know. I just said you have a choice. Pick one. <laughs> Cake or death? What? Cake or death? I refer you to the a question that I gave uh, some moments ago, whether one you are one of those people who would rather stew in the delicious feeling of losing for another five years unless the party of your choice reflects perfection in your mind. And yes, you are. 
you and people like you are the reason that we will most like and i would put a small amount of money on this the conservative party are going to uh, become revivified by the war on woke and uh, you know pointing at uh, dinghies and they will win the next general election because the labor party those on the in the center and on the left will fight themselves to the ground in a uh, contest of um, purity you got to pick one ian you only get uh, one choice and uh, you appear to have made up your mind. Harrogate, Rebecca. Oh, hello. Rebecca. I'm thrilled to be speaking to you again. I haven't spoken to you for ages. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I've been thinking a lot about this. You, you know, you write about the whole Tory thing. It's gone crazy and everything. But um, what I find a bit depressing is, I, I you know, we kind of go, it goes in cycles. You know, the Tories mess up and then we get Labour in and then... <laughs> whatever but um obviously we want want to get labor in um, and to try and then do the damage and make things better hopefully but um i am concerned um i just with with the whole keir starmer thing i just don't think um it it's just i just can't connect with him at all um in and i was listening to a program on another radio station today yeah. and they they had a they were coming from liverpool and they had a comedian on on from liverpool he said look um the scouts they don't like keir starmer they just don't like him that live a, you know, it's kind of like, so that's like a whole city's worth of people. <laughs> well, you can't, one person cannot talk for a city's worth of no, people. No, they just... I, well, okay, but they did say, um, you know, the, the Liverpool have got very strong, you know, there's a lot of anger towards, like, the Sun newspaper, and apparently he wrote it, in, I don't know if that's true, whatever, but they're very, very, you know, there's a lot of things that they feel strongly about. But no, yeah. I'm just mentioning well, here, that. Here's the, I, I get that. Uh, here's the thing about writing for the Sun newspaper. There's absolutely no point in Keir Starmer writing for The Guardian. Because he's got those people already. There's no point yeah. in, for, in, in him writing for The Independent because he's got those people as well. He could write for The Mirror, but what's the point? They're going to vote for him anyway, the readers of The Mirror. So, yes, he absolutely yeah. should go to The Sun because that's the way to reach the people. Yeah. Because other, otherwise he might not be able to reach that he that wouldn't vote for him yeah. unless they read something and thought, hey, you know what, maybe, yeah, this guy's not that, not, not that bad, so he should be writing for The Sun. Yeah, okay. Well, but uh, for what I think is that um, I personally feel that do Labour really, do, do they, they have to seriously ask themselves, do we want to be re-elected or do we want to keep Keir Starmer? What is the, it's such a gamble. Why, you know, in my opinion, my humble opinion, um, when I hear people like Andy Burnham, every time I see him, I listen to him, I think I really engage with him. And I feel a connection and I just think, why can't they have somebody like that um, up for the leadership? Because, you know, they, they need someone with passion and people that can identify with people. Um, and I, I'm sure he's, you know, Keir Starmer's, you know, I just think that the whole lawyer thing, the whole, <laughs> I just... No, I know that sounds awful. I've got nothing to get... Well, I was going to say I've got nothing to get stories, but the thing is, I just don't think that he has... He's got it. He ain't got no charisma. He, he hasn't. Right. No. And, you know, I of course, we, we're desperate to sort of see, you know, we need hope. And let's just get somebody that people feel... Yeah, the, th the thing know. is, the thing is, Rebecca, if that's how we're going to elect our leaders from now on, then we're going to get people like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. And we're going to get people like this. A president! Oh, Can you believe it? Also, can I just say something else? We're also going to get people like Tony Blair, who I voted for at the time because I thought, oh, this is amazing. It's a whole new start. It's mm. a whole new beginning. And then, um, you know, and it started off all right. And then the whole thing happened with Iraq and everything. And, and that's everything. all anybody can say about Tony no, Blair. The left, the, he's, he's even more po unpopular amongst the left wing than he is yeah. amongst the so right that's wing. What I'm saying. Just, li it, just think of what the, he managed to do. 
and what the uh, Tories have undone since he was leading this country. Well, Just think beyond the war thing. I mean, I know that war well, it's is... it's very hard to think. OK, I'm thinking that he put... Uh, and another thing I might say that's quite controversial is, uh -oh. unfortunately, um, which, you know, getting a lot of people into education, useless degrees, things they couldn't use. That Again, we need apprenticeships. We need people who can, you know, those kind of skills. And I'm not saying that everybody should have a good education. Of course they should, everybody. But, um, and you know, every, but not everybody is, is should have a, is going to have a degree or is, and not everybody. Right. You, yes. you can, you can keep pick, uh, picking at um, his record as long as you like, Rebecca, but you, you're just falling into that category of people on the left who do not want a Labour government unless it reflects perfection in your mind. You'd much prefer to sit and stew in the delicious agony of defeat than have a Labour Party that is led by someone who you don't like. It's just absolutely painful. And by this method, the Conservatives will win the next election. I bet you. It's not going to be... Uh, and, and if they don't actually win it, then it's going to be really tight. Because this poll lead that they got at the moment, that's just going to evaporate. Because of the war on woke that they're going to prosecute, and people will be re are really on the edge of their seats when you start screaming about that online and they'll be spotting dinghies. That's what's going to happen. And they'll be um, highlighting the fact that Keir Starmer has got Sir in front of his name, and that he's, like you say, that he's a lawyer, and, uh, you know, what about this, and what about Jeremy Corbyn, and what about that, and why aren't they socialists, and what about, have they forgotten about communism, and et cetera, and so on. You just, it, life is not perfect, nor will it ever be. You've got two choices. Well, actually, you've got, a multitude of choices, but only one of two parties are likely to actually win. Select Birmingham, Mark. Hello, Nicky. Hello, Frank. Yeah, good. The thanks. nanny, the nanny was Betty Davis. It's good resemblance, isn't it? That is. What the, a film that was. <laughs> the <laughs> nanny trust. was Betty Davis. Were you talking about? Yeah. Uh, cool. Nanny state. This trust the nanny. Oh, she was evil. Anyway. That conference, it, it was like an audience with uh, Silla Black, wasn't it? And, and that MP that, that yanked that lanyard off that poor, poor girl's neck. How heavy can they be? What an example to set. Crazy. Um, what film, The Nanny? The horror film. The Nanny, Betty Davis. Really? Yeah. Black no. and white one, an old one. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm telling the eight. Now, yeah, you're not talking one. about whatever happened to Baby Jane, are you? That's the one. Well, that but wasn't she called was... the nanny. No, And neither she was, was she the nanny. No, she wasn't. She was her sister. I thought she was the nanny. <laughs> you got it wrong, Joe. <laughs> no. She's not the nanny. Mark. Oh, no, right. and furthermore... No, 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 no. Whatever happened to Baby Jane? She wasn't the nanny. She was her sister. I've written a letter to Daddy. Sing! <laughs> no, don't. You need to uh, do your research, Mark. It wasn't me, it's my missus. Oh, it? OK. Well, then she needs to uh, get herself in uh, in order. Yeah, well, she's a bit younger than me. Anyway, what, what do you think about violence, then? Um, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on, mate. They're going to get really heavy, aren't they? You know, what's she going to do? Yeah. And I mean, that M people, I feel really sorry for my people who couldn't screw her for copyright using M people. Yeah. Yeah, right. Crazy, well, I, 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 I think that's the least of our worries. Um, M, M people just uh, sold some more records. Um, he's about to have a domestic with his uh, other half. Maidstone. Hello, Joan. Hello there, Nick. Hello and there, Nick. Joan. <laughs> Hello, Nick. This will really, truly blow your mind. Oh, Okay, at the moment I'm going around promoting group bartering, right? Well, group, group bartering? Yeah, it really, really works. What is you it? Know, take it from me. I'll tell you what it is. You just have a group of people, right? And also in the middle you have somebody who is can be trusted and is the administrator, the administrator in worldwide, you know, wide web wise 
so that he can carry out, you know, the negotiations, etc. Yeah, an administrator, a, yeah, a worldly, word, yeah, that's a word. worldly, so a worldly wise administrator. <laughs> that's Trust right. me, I'm like so a say, smart person. Well, I found what, the very what man. Happens, what happens? Just save your cash for this, you know, sort of official stuff. Now the rest of the stuff. Find out what you can give, you know, not only in terms of stuff, but also in terms of what you can actually do. Joan, can I right? ask you a question about this? Yep. What are you talking about? <laughs> it, it works. But Nick. what works? What, what is it that we're trying to achieve here, Joan, just so I know where we're going? So that you don't have to worry so much about your bills, my dear. Oh, bills, bills, right. Yeah, all those horrible things that come. Yeah. Because all of us, each one of us, has some sort of talent, whether it's walking a dog, you know, digging a ditch or whatever. <laughs> walking a dog? <laughs> yeah. Does that actually count as a talent? <laughs> it does to some folk. I guess so. So, you know, you kiss. You count each point. Hmm. You know, it's a pound equals a point. Yes, and points make? I get the cash thing in terms of points. When I taught it in Wales, they were called coombs, meaning the valleys, you know. Right, well, I, I, so I, I, do I don't there, know. Points, points. Let's, I think somebody has a good point about points. If you get it in yep. order, <laughs> you get extra points. That's extra right. points for getting it in order, Joan. I still have yep. no idea what you're talking about. Well... Oh, well, you should it's have so, said. It's so easy. <laughs> I've been overthinking it. So easy. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's so easy, but, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it saved a lot of people a lot of worries, believe you me. Right, well, we're yes. talking about the K-A-S-H. Yeah, yes. That's it. Forget the cash. Think instead of points. One point equals one pound. Right. Now, what you do then is you just... Trade between you in the group, not one to one, not swaps like you did in the playground. You're you're you you're actually a describing a hippie commune. No, I'm not describing. I a hippie think that's commune. exactly what you're describing. Well, you're describing if you a, want hippie to call it a hippie commune. A hippie commune. I'm quite happy. Now, with I would that love to call it a hippie commune. Movie. Yep, but what what it actually does? You think of a hairdresser, right? All they want is somebody to sit in the chair. Yeah, I'll do my whether, own hair. Whether they I'm not giving the hairdresser any, any of my precious points. Yeah, so they, whether they pay in points or no. pounds no. doesn't matter. No. I'm doing my then own. Then later on, you know, somebody piles them up. And I even came across a woman who had ten cats. She wanted somebody to move in <laughs> looking after these very smelly moggies while she went on a holiday. Yeah, how many points gets a cat? Well, it's up to them, you know, what they decide. Right. Well, maybe there's you a know? cat shortage on. The price yeah, will just well, skyrocket. Yeah, whatever you like to think. But anyway, some brave soul moved in, looked after the happy monkeys, happy woman went on oh, holiday. Sounds, and sounds he earned delight. himself lots of points. Lots of points. points. <laughs> yep, lots of prizes. It. So easy. Well, if um, I just spent a couple of uh, years thinking about it, then I'd probably think that it was easy too. Joan, it's made well, absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Um, uh, and just because of that, would you like to be the next Chancellor of the Exchequer? I could do a far better job than this one. I'm, Be and me together, my dear. I, 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 don't, the world. I don't doubt Be it for together. a second. Can you start first thing on Monday? Well, in the afternoon on Monday. Well, maybe Tuesday. Don't come until Wednesday. Uh, in fact, let's say Thursday. Can you start first thing? Well, you know, Thursday's very close to the weekend. Uh, take the weekend off, and um, we'll see you sometime in October. It's a date, Joan. You're hired. Enfield. Hello, Mike. Hello. If, if the allowance, the tax allowances were raised to fourteen or fifteen thousand pounds, then everything would be much better off. So say trickle down from all these high earners when they're lo when they are losing so much on the pension funds. Yeah, we won't trickle down. And the other thing is, lots of people pay their taxes, but with pictures and works of art, artifacts, which are in our museums. Why can't they be sold, just like the gold was sold many years ago? You want the museums to sell their works of art? The works of art contributed by those people who 
couldn't pay their taxes and so donated their works of art. Right, so I ask again, you want the museums to sell their works of art? Museums and the galleries and all those, yes, because they, they couldn't pay their taxes, so they gave works of art. Right, and you want the museums well, to... Ask, you yeah, want the museums and the galleries to sell their works of art? Which were donated to pay taxes of the very rich. Right, so what would they show on the walls if they sold their works of art? Well, thousands in the... Thousands in the, down below in the, in, in the stores. Yes, the same with the universities. You don't see much... If you go down to the universities and the museums and see what they've got downstairs that they can't show because they haven't got enough room, there's plenty there. Yeah, it's called um, a, a revolving collection. They take some from the cellar and they put them on the walls and then the next year they put them back in the cellar and they put some new stuff on the walls in order to... So we've got plenty keep, to sell, haven't we? Keep, you, d <laughs> you don't sell stuff like that, Mike. The whole point is you keep it for the nation. But we have to pay so much high taxes, we have to sell some of our assets. We've got no choice. If she won't use the oil money and she keeps on giving money to the rich, <laughs> what other choice? You have to sell some of our assets, surely. No, not those assets, Mike. Oh, my God, the, uh... The vandals are at the gates. <laughs> That's the plan. The National Gallery should sell off, sell off its stuff just so Liz Trust can give more money to uh, Shell and BP. You're out of your mind. Wow. But it does qualify you as a, a new role in Liz Truss's uh, government. <laughs> Would you like to be the new minister for, um, for uh, um, media and sport? Close down the galleries, sell all that uh, stuff. Nobody really needs paintings and sculptures. I want to give more money to millionaires. Where else are we going to find it? I am stunned. <laughs> Just when you thought you'd heard it all. Leeds. Hello, John. Oh, good evening, Mick. How are you? Great, thanks. I, I was going to comment about um, what we, what's going on today in the economy, but what you said about the Danish royal family. Uh, I'm sorry, I just wiped everything from my mind. I'm yeah. so sorry for them. Well, <laughs> terrible, terrible. <laughs> not get much sleep uh, this evening, and I apologise for the bad news. Oh, no, never. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but seriously, no, I wanted to... Um, talk about what's going on with the um, Conservative budget and cards on the table. I was a young Conservative at university oh, for my sins. What? For my sins. That has changed. A that young you that Conservative changed. at university. Wow, you don't yes. come across them very often. No, you don't, but there was a few of them where I was. You, you wouldn't believe it. Where were you? University of York. Right. Oh, well, York. <laughs> oh, I know. Nudge, nudge, wink. I know. <laughs> the thing is, what no I would say is... I what that I mean, means, but go on. No, no, no. Fair enough. Um, what I would say is... You're I'm not a actually... DJ by any chance, are you, John? No, I'm not. No. Carry on. Thank you. No, it's just that um, I'm actually relatively sympathetic to what they're trying to do in the sense of, you know, stimulate growth, get everything going. But the key thing for me, which I think they haven't realised, is that the British population as a whole isn't that keen on growing the country or economic growth, if I may, if I may say. There's just been a few um, opinion polls taken in The Economist that show that the average British person doesn't really want economic growth that much. I mean, a key example, loads of people voted for Brexit, even though they were warned explicitly it would tank the economy. Fair enough. There have been reports that people are all for things like, you know, building houses and stuff, as long as it's not near them, you know, the old NIMBY problem. And there was an especially interesting thing I saw in The Economist, whereby apparently people were all for economically developing their local town or village, but they would not want for example, a new university or college built near them, if it would bring in more people from outside their local area. Oh, yeah, people from outside the local area. Exactly. Terrible thing. <laughs> oh. Was oh, that it? 
pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I think it's just the sense that, um, sorry, I just think their point of trying to grow the economy, and to an extent I sympathise with what they're trying to do, of course. Yeah. But it just feels like it's self-defeating from day one. Right. Because I, it, because it doesn't seem on. to me like they're in, they intend on growing the economy at all. That's just something that they say mm. in order to cover their tracks. They, they, because nobody on earth agrees with them that this is the way to grow an economy. Not one single person on earth mm. right now. You'd have to leave the planet to try to find somebody <laughs> who agrees with what they're doing. So it can't be that these highly intelligent beings uh, actually mm -hmm. think that they're going to grow the economy by uh, giving tax cuts to millionaires because it has never worked in any place it's ever been tried. So why would it work here now? So you have to think Absolutely. that it is something else that they're doing. Hey, John, are you sure you're not a DJ? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> think about it as a career path. I don't know, it's just a bit like, hey, no? Margate. Hello, David. Hello, how are you today? Good, thanks. Good. Um, a couple of points. I was a Brexiteer. Uh, I still am a Brexiteer. Uh, your, um, I can't remember his first name, McShane, the, 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 the guy that's written the book, yeah. um, made a couple of statements that I hear people saying all the time, and it just... It niggles me, so I thought I would have a, a, a conversation with you, if that's all right. Well, we've got a couple of minutes before the news. Go ahead. Great. OK, number one, um, I voted for Brexit not because I didn't want Europeans here or, or anything like that. Uh, the reason that I voted for Brexit is because I actually think that Europe uh, or the European Union is going to unravel over the next 10 years or so. Uh, and effectively, my vote was the equivalent of shorting on the EU. And I think we're better out first so that we can start getting the work done before 26 other countries all start going out trying to get trade agreements themselves. So I shorted the EU effectively uh, with my vote. And it wasn't for uh, immigration. It wasn't for the 325 million a, a week or all of that sort of rubbish that Right. Okay. Spat. So you essentially just bought a lottery ticket because you you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen in the next ten years or yeah, the next or the next ten months. No, so I, so know, why why did why did you why did you really vote for Brexit? Uh, because I genuinely, having looked at it, um, I believe that it is going to unravel. Yeah, I know you said that unravel. Yeah, but and, having, and when, you, when you said when you said having looked at it, what did you what was it that you looked at? Okay, so it's not only this... So we, we have Brexit, we were probably the most vocal, but there's about another four or five countries that are currently having the same conversations well, that we were. They aren't. You have Greece that are dragging the finances. Well, you, you have the pigs nations which are dragging the finances down. You've got... Uh, countries like Ukraine, which are joining and, are, again, are oh, going they, to be... They aren't. Well, they are trying to join the EU. Everything, everything, they... the, everything you're just saying is are things that have happened since you voted for Brexit. So I'll, I'll ask you yeah. one more time. Why did you really vote for Brexit? Because I'm being proven right well, you, in what I voted for you, that you, time. That, that's not a reason to vote. By, by, because five years later you were proven right. Unless you can uh, see the future. Uh, in which case, um, I'd like to have a conversation about the lottery with you. Tooting. Hello, Victor. Victor? Hi. Hi yes, Nick. Victor. Hi, Nick. Yeah, I, uh, first, before I wanted to say what I, what I called to say, I did go listen to that Megadeth song. Yes. Uh, from your friend before. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's underwhelming. Underwhelming. Rock and roll! Underwhelming. Yeah. The reviews it's, are it's, in. <laughs> it's just that gentleman saying, bring out the dead for like 20 seconds and then some music starts. Mm. What's, anyway, what's the music I like? Say, uh, I, I, as soon as it started, you I turned it off. Yeah. Song. I, just wanted, <laughs> yeah, I, just wanted, I just wanted to see what those 20 seconds were right. about because I was okay. very excited. Life and then it's like, changing. Anyway. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I just think the Conservatives will win again uh, because voters have very short memories and as soon as they get Labour on and Keir Starmer saying something publicly about statues or something like that, mm -hmm. it's uh, he's going to be anti-Britain. But um, the good thing, of the silver lining about Liz, Liz Truss is I think if things get very nasty with 
Russia and, and someone on, on the security center tells us, Liz, you have to use the Trident. Uh, she thinks you're talking about bubblegum. So I think in that sense, I think I think she's safe. Right. OK, thanks a lot, Victor. <laughs> a listener with material. Oh, no. This is um, a an article from the Financial Times. The Tories have become unmoored from the British people. The government may have adopted the most extreme economic position of any major party in the developed world. In a single week, Britain has gone from being a one among many nations facing fierce economic headwinds to being a financial basket case. <laughs> it's currency plunging, bond yields and mortgage rates rising and pension funds scrambling to stay afloat. There was a lot of um, financial, um, uh, you know, like uh, uh, insider talk. What's the word? <laughs> Um, uh, you know, like gobbledygook that the financial uh, types uh, say to each other, and I had absolutely no idea what they were talking about, but it all seemed very, very bad. <coughs> Last Friday's tax cuts were an unforced fiscal error, says the, the Financial Times. It signals a departure from sensible economic thinking. <laughs> we went from sensible economic thinking to this. <coughs> A week into trustonomics, one could make the case that this represents the first time in modern history that the government of a major developed country has decided to completely unmoor itself from not only economic orthodoxy, but its own electorate. Every few years, hundreds of political scientists evaluate political parties on various issues, from the environment to law and order, gender issues, and the redistribution of wealth. As part of this, they place these parties along the left-right scale of economics with the far left indicating full-blown Jeremy Corbyn Boo! and the far, far right being the most extreme, low-regulation, low-tax, free-market approach. Now, until last week, the Conservative Party looked a relatively normal centre-right party on economics. Quite normal, Bodge. Um. Yes. Then, um, Friday happened. Then it all changed. In a snap Financial Times survey of a group of British political scientists across the political spectrum, the consensus was that Prime Minister Liz Truss and Chancellor Crazy Kwarteng, the Tories now score a stunning 9.4 out of 10. This puts them beyond where the Republicans stood under Donald Trump and just to the right of the Brazilian Jair Bolsonaro. Wow. We've got the most right economic, right wing, economically speaking, government in the world. Uh, out of, and nobody voted for them. Out of 275 parties in 61 countries, the Tories rank as the most right-wing of all. And people say that the right-wing will never take over in this country. Well, wake up, it's happened already. On the same economic scale where Truss's government now scores a 9.4, the average UK voter positions themselves as a 3.1. The average Conservative voter, a 4.2. The Tories have plotted a course to the very edge of the economic map, and when they scan the horizon, there is nobody to be seen. And you know, when that, that's the Financial Times. <laughs> Those lefty uh, communist activists at the Financial Times. And you know, when absolutely no one is going in the direction that you've taken, a sensible person might pause and think that maybe absolutely everybody might know something you don't. A lunatic that's joined a cult and drank the Kool-Aid can convince themselves that everything is going fine as they march confidently to the edge of the cliff. And that would be okay if they weren't dragging the whole country after them. When none of us said we wanted to go that way and we didn't even put them in charge. They just took over the decision-making like we'd voted them in, which we hadn't. What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. Oxford, Kiani. Hi, Nick, how are you? Good, thanks. Good, good, good. Um, first, I would like to say, I really hope when the vote for the reducing the higher end of the tax bracket comes in, that uh, that actually does get, uh, get through. Why, why, um, why would you say that? Only because, I mean, firstly, the political editor of the Express, he, in layman's turn, explained how trickle-down economics works. But, and it, but it doesn't work anywhere it's well, ever been tried. Do you know what, Nick? I have to beg to differ with you on that simply where, because... Where is it, where has it worked? 
the law of economics is as real as law of physics and that, and it, do, it well, does work. You get, two eco- you get two ec- economists in a room and they will disagree yeah. with each other yeah. about <laughs> everything, including the colour of the you, wallpaper. They may well do, but they can't actually change the laws of uh, economics, how they work. Okay. And well, to put down economics, I, mean, I suppose if a, uh, a quick example would be... Um, a friend of mine has a manufacturing factory, he manufactures uh, hoist for the medical industry. Um, re- just recently, uh, because of the weak pound, his orders from Europe have started surging. So he has to now, he's actively looking for another two welders just to help him to meet the orders. When the other two welders, when, he get, when they get the jobs, they're going to be paying national insurance, they're going to be paying tax. Well, what's and that going to they're, they're not going to be uh, top rate earners, though, are they? Welders? No, I'll, no, I'll move on to the top rate earners. They're not top rate earners, but that's essentially trickle down economics. Now, if we move to the top end. But, but it isn't. Um, sorry? But how is employing a welder trickle down economics? Trickle down the only reason why he's in a position to actually employ the welder in the first place is because, um, ironically, because of the weak pound. If we go to the top tax earners, the reason why they're top tax earners in the first place is because they are actually very good at what they do. So by giving them, I suppose... Welders? Uh, best... Welders earn over £150,000 a year? I no, mean, no, no, ma- no. Maybe this no, is no, not a good example is, that you're giving. Uh, that's on the, on the normal level for the normal people. Yeah, when we go to the rich people who are actually the investors, when they get this, I suppose the best way of putting it is um, a, a simple analogy would be if you have a cake, you give it to a poor person, he's going to eat it. You give it to a rich person, he will do something with it. Yeah. Yes, he I, may. I, I'll, tell you, what, I'll tell you what he'll he do will. with it, Kiani. He, he will put it into a, a numbered account in the British Virgin Islands where it will sit. If you give a poor person a thousand pounds, they will spend that thousand pounds in their local community and the money will swirl around the economy in a virtuous circle. If you give a thousand pounds to somebody who earns a million pound a year, they're not going to notice it. They're not going to go out and think, wow, now I can afford to uh, buy a, I don't know, a new TV or because they can already buy a new TV. They're not going to change the way that they uh, approach the uh, their uh, weekly spend because they have no problem in that regard. It's utterly pointless to give rich people more money because what are they going to do with it? Nothing. And as for um, the, the, it uh, makes a weak pound which benefits the country, it would only benefit the country if we were, had um, a, a strong export market, but exports are through the floor. So if we, so imports cost us more, and we're not exporting as much as we used to. So it's um, it's a failure on both counts. But uh, apart from that, <laughs> I can't, uh, even apart from that, I can't agree with anything you say. But uh, good effort, Kiani. Ponty Preeth, Louise. Hello. Louise. Hi. <clears throat> Can I ask you something? No. <laughs> Every time you're on, and I, I listen to you most nights because I, I, I usually agree with you, but every time you say it's old people's fault that we've got a conservative <laughs> government. Yeah. Now, why is that? Because if you, look at the, if you look at the, demogra- the demographics, old people over 65 vote overwhelmingly conservative. Age groups below that don't. You don't make any allowance for people of my age who don't vote conservative, never well, have, never of course, will. Of course I don't mean every single person. I'm just saying that the vast majority of people over 65 vote conservative. They just do. Well, I just think it's unfair. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, that's life, ain't it, Louise? It's unfair that you say that because it's not... I don't think it's true. But it is it's true. Certainly not, the, certainly not true around here anyway. Well, you live in South Wales. I do. Yeah. But uh, it is undeniably true. It's a fact, Louise. It might not be comfortable for you, but uh, facts don't lie. Well, I just don't think it's fair. You don't think it's fair. Well, what is? Name me one thing that's fair. <laughs> Apart from an actual fair, but that's a different spelling. Have you... If you had to look at um, the Sunday Times for today. No, I'm 
doing a bit of a show at the moment, so I haven't had, I haven't had time. Why? What's in it? There's something fishy going on. Something literally, fishy? You can say that again. Literally with Quasi. He's yeah. been up to something. Up to something. Well, leave it with me, Louise, and I'll look into it. You have a look at it All and right. see what you think. And okay. I still don't think it's fair. Don't keep blaming <laughs> elderly people because we're stuck with truck and whatever bloody name is. Right. Okay, Louise, it's not your fault. I'll, I'll just, let's agree on that. Banger, Godfrey. Yeah. Hello there. Hello there. Yeah. I'm there, yeah. I'm here, here. Yes. Are you there? Yes. Is there anybody I'm there? Just me. Hello? Is there anybody on the line? Just me. No, I don't think there's anybody on this line. Do you want me to press the green button or yes, something? Yes, yes. Press the green button. <laughs> press, Hello? press one if you want to talk to the on-air host. Press two if you have an opinion that the on-air host would agree with. Now press hash. Press four if you forgot to turn down your radio. Press five if you'd like to be put on hold. He'd like to be put on hold. Well. Your wish is my command. Thank you, Godfrey. That was my favourite call ever. Let's go back to Godfrey and see what he's got to say. Seems uh, only reasonable to do that. Hello, Godfrey. Hello there. Hello, hello, hello there. Back. Yeah, hello. Can hello. you hear me? No. No. Can you hear me now? No. You can't hear me? Nope. Why is that, I wonder? I don't know. Is there something, something wrong at your end? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very difficult to understand what you're saying. Can you understand me now? No. Oh, I can hear you quite clearly. Can you? All right, well, let's let's press on. We'll s see if we can struggle through. Yeah, see, you, uh, how can we struggle through if you can't hear me? What's that? Um, There's a rustling on the line, Godfrey. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, I can hear you now. I don't know what okay. it is you just did, but suddenly I can uh, hear you. Well, yeah, I you can were, were... hear you. Well, uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time on this call. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Oh, shame. Um, the, your, your instructions told me to press hush, and I did, and that's what silenced it. Right. Anyway, well, whoever, okay. whoever gave you those instructions was an idiot. Yeah, okay. Uh, I won't say no more. So she's said from the start that she's a challenger. She challenges everything. Uh, she said she worked in the Treasury, and she thought their attitudes were old-fashioned, and she would challenge them. Yeah. And that's why we no, had no uh, report from the Office for Budget Responsibility before the Chancellor made his, his announcement. Um, she's obsessed with the fact that we mustn't be a mother state, um, and she's against people advising us about the, the way to behave, even uh, I carried to the extremes. She would tell us we could drive on either side of the motorway um, and make up our own minds. Uh, well, anything else would be nannying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah if, if to, perhaps tell, telling us to drive on the left-hand side is nannying. Mm. Um, and then um, she doesn't listen to facts about what causes um, the uh, growth and what doesn't hinder growth. Uh, putting up the cooperation tax, a, a small amount has been shown in the past not to end the growth, and so on. She just doesn't listen. She's headstrong, and she frightens me. <laughs> yeah, you, me, and everybody I know. Yeah, I, I, I don't think she's necessarily headstrong. I, I get the feeling that she's just a puppet for uh, all of those, um, the Tufton Street Massive, all, all those sh shady organisations who get funding from who knows where, but we can guess, who are pr uh, essentially I telling her what to do. I don't know. Are you all right, Godfrey? <laughs> father was left 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 wingish you know yeah and then she's at the time as a father so she's so she's extreme right wingish she's just uh, not 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 in this world i'm uh, sorry um compare compare her to maggie thatcher i thought maggie thatcher was bad but liz trust is worse well it, again just just when you think it couldn't possibly get any worse than that it suddenly does yeah <laughs> Great hairstyle, though, Lizzie. You're uh, very, very convincing. As a, uh, you know, as a, uh, a uh, uh, yeah, I wonder what a tribute, where, where a, tribute a tribute act. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, God for you. What? The only good thing I can see about her is with this um, energy uh, uh, help. You know, she's done it for two years rather than six months. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's I a think? bad thing, Godfrey. Look behind the curtain. She isn't giving us a handout. She is making us borrow money that we have to pay back for probably right. for the rest of our lives just so that we don't have to cut the profits of the profiteering energy giants. Other countries, led by proper people, are doing just that. They are cutting the profits of the energy giants because it is essentially profiteering in time of war and they are uh, having their wing wings clipped just a bit, just a tiny bit. They won't even notice the billions, hundreds of billions of pounds of profits that they make. But Liz Truss seems bizarrely on the side of them as opposed to on the side of us. Weird. All right, thanks a lot, Godfrey. Well done, that man. Pearly, Christine. Hello, Nick. Christine. <laughs> what can I say? Um, I, I do enjoy listening to you a lot, and I, I'm glad you teamed up with Karen McGiffin because you give me a laugh and a half. Thanks. Right. That's <laughs> all right. Um, really, I phoned up. I got so mad for, for the first time ever about what's going on now. Mm. But I had to call you. I, I don't tell anybody my politics ever. But? Never voted, voted Labour in my life. But yeah. I would now vote for Keir Starmer if West, Wes Streeting was there as we well. Wes Streeting? Yeah. What can you tell us about Wes Streeting? Apart from that, he's the uh, the shadow. He's the shadow health secretary. He certainly does seem to have a uh, more of a, uh, a strong relationship with health than than Therese Coffin. Yeah, yeah. But I, I've recently come across him through James O'Brien. Oh yeah. And 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 I was very impressed. And I started following him on Twitter. Right. And remained impressed, and more so now. And he, if he teamed up with Keir. And, and they, 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 they are the dream team. For, right. me, for me, they would be the dream team. And I would vote Labour for the first time ever. Um, that what I would admit, admit to, I've never voted Labour. Uh, not knowingly, anyway. I can't think <laughs> of <something. laughs> Not knowingly. <laughs> not well, knowingly. No, no. no I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, oh, boring I, middle of the road, I'm afraid. Right. I used to be a... Um, a liberal fan of a certain Jeremy, Jeremy mm -hmm. and um, he let me down in, in lots of ways, found yeah. out lots about him. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, people like that, I, I, I could easily vote for. And, but I, I never never tell anybody who I vote for. And But I would, up till today... If it well, was Keir Starmer and like, Wes Streeting, that's the dream team. Yes, they're the dream team. And also, yeah. Chris Milk... Um, is local to me, mm. and I um, was very impressed with him. He, he, oh, he, come off it. Boy. No, whoa, 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 let me say, he's a local boy done good. Um, and I've come across him it, in, a, in my personal life and his family, and, and, and they're a lovely, lovely family. I don't care. And they live to, Oh, hang on a minute. They live just up the road. Yeah. And I've, I've watched what he did. And, I don't you care know, how I, lovely I he is. To, but... When I found out he was brown nosing <laughs> Mr. Johnson, who I've got it, a name for, it's, um, it's as soon as I found out, I've been right off him and I've made it quite clear to him pole. I would never vote for him again. Never vote for him again. Take that, uh, Chris Philp. Swindon, Carrie. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, right. I, I am fed up with all these politicians sick to running death. the country. Or being sick oh, to well, death. I, I'm sick of all these politicians running not the country. Be, like that's not, what not, they're not, supposed not to be doing. Not being able, not being able to run the country. Country, right? Right. I, I think it's time that now the king is king, he should, he should build alongside his kingship. A political party. He has a ship. Um. Well, is um whatever he's got, right? Right. His um, his kinghood. Yes. His kinghood. Yeah. Um. He, he 
we should take all of people who are in this country mm. that people actually like and respect. Yeah, put them on a like, ship. No, 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 no. Build a new political party. Well, where does right? the ship? Where does the ship come in, Carrie? The ship can carry away all the poli politicians ah. we've already got. Yes. Um, we 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 take people like Bob Geldof, who is um, <laughs> experienced with Live Aid. Yeah, um, we we put him on the ship straight away. Bye bye. No, 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 bye bye, no, Bob. No, we, we put him in the new political party. Oh, right? well, then. I don't like the sound of that. We, we we take lots and lots of people, like Esther Ransom, Jeremy Kyle, you yourself even. Right, I'm, um, I'm definitely not getting on that boat. Not with that uh, guest list. No, no, no. These are the ones that stay in the country right. and and become okay, so, Prince, like Prince I said, Charles's new, new I'll, party. I'll be first up right. that gangplank, sailing away yeah. out of here. All right. And uh, alternatively... Oh, there's an alternative. Yeah. Can we not send an SOS to Putin and ask him to come and rescue us? I think. Say all is forgiven and um, please save us. Because I don't have any faith and I don't want to be sent to war against you for a government that didn't actually care about us at all in the first place. And what are we going to return to after a war if we can't even be living in a country where they can run us before we even go into war? It's not going to be like we go to war and we're going to be all sorted out mm. if we win it. You know, for a moment right? there, I thought that if I, if I remain silent, you'll just run out of steam. But uh, <laughs> apparently you're nuclear powered. You're not running out of steam at all. You're continuing to uh, carry on. And um, I wish you all the best, uh, Carrie. But uh, I want you to promise me one thing. Keep thinking. It's what you do best. Epsom. Hello, Steve. Hello, Nick. Um, yeah, about the uh, people that are needed for telecom engineers, I don't understand. If they know there's going to be a shortage of a particular skill, why they don't train people up in this country first before bringing them in from wherever all over the world? Well, because it's short-termism. They uh, identify a problem at the moment that it exists and then run around in a panic trying to solve it immediately. You can't solve a problem like a shortage of skills straight away by training people in this country. It takes a long time. And so they then uh, import the people that uh, can fill those gaps. But don't you think they would have known that some time ago um, before getting to this point. Well, a competent government would, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just the noise. I might like to do something like that, but, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna look abroad, which doesn't make any sense to me. If, you, if you've got a business in a family and you want somebody to come in and do something, surely you would offer that job to uh, someone in your family first. Yes, well... And train them up. Well, yes, the... Um I mean, the recent uh, uh, example of that was lorry drivers. We had a, a big problem with uh, a lack of lorry drivers, you remember, not too long ago. Yeah. And so, so what happened was we had um, a, a large number were, were sourced from abroad while we, in a mad scramble, tried to get people to take a, you know, an, an advanced uh, lorry driving exam, whatever you call it. Uh, but the problem, the problem was that they were leaving other jobs that now have vacancies. And so they just left their warehouse to go and be a driver, and now the warehouse doesn't have enough people. So it just it just moved the problem from one place to the to the next. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say to that, but I, I I just think that you've got to train your own people up first. You know, surely they they must have foresight to see what's coming up, and they must be able to organise something. Uh, it's obvious, isn't it? New technology. You're going to have um, you're going to have skill shortages. So oh, right, right, are, like well, yeah, that. but that makes that, that makes sense to you and me and um, perhaps nobody else. But uh, I appreciate that, Steve. I mean, the the example of doctors is is a fairly easy one. You, you can see where the uh, population 
growth is going to happen, you can tell from that how many GPs are going to be needed. So it might be incumbent on a competent government to actually meet that need. And you're going to have to decide to do that 10 years before the, um, the, the crunch time happens. But the, 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 everything seems to, uh, uh, to arrive as a surprise to this administration over the last 12 years. They wake up shocked that the sun has risen in the east. Uh, Lewisham, hello Jane. Hi Nick. Hi Jane. You keep going on about Labour. On and on about Labour. But they just as hope this as Conservative. Ah. Oh. They really, really are. And what makes and you the, say that? I, the only party that's going to pull us all out of this is the motoring party .co The motoring party. Yes. Yeah, look us up. I won't. Remember us, I will right? not do anything it's... of the sort. <laughs> you must, Nick, you must. It's necessary. It's all getting too bad now. And that's it. The motoring party will just drive us all out of this. Okay, okay, well, um, we... I'll, I'll be in the back seat with um, uh, with a sick bag, if that's any help. Thanks a lot, Jane. Right, here's this story. That, this is in the mail. Even the mail are furious with the Tories. They, they kept writing about these uh, councillors and kept reminding us that they were conservatives. It, it's almost as though a, um, a rogue reporter got in to write this story to really paint the Conservative Party in the worst possible light. Oh, here it is. You ready? Local councillors have been accused of telling sob stories about how they are struggling in the cost of living crisis to ensure their own pay rises after they rejected debating a boost for free school meals moments before. What? Tories. See, this is, this is the reporter. No, not me saying it. He's highlighting, he or she, sexist, highlighting which party they're from. Tories at Central Bedfordshire Council unanimously voted against debating a motion for an inflationary 10% uplift to the free school meals budget, which provides just 82 pence worth of food per child per day. 82p. Millionaire Tory cabinet member Councillor Steve Dixon, who is one of the largest shareholders in a major UK developer, said that, quotes, it doesn't matter if you live in a cottage or a manor house, we're all affected by the cost of living increases. Mr Dixon, who would have earned in the region of £160,000 in dividends last year for his stake in the parent company of developer Wilmot Dixon, Hardwick Investments, which turns over more than a billion pounds a year, also received over 31,000 pounds in allowances in the last year. Minutes after shooting down the free school meals debate, Tories passionately argued against a motion to stop their own allowances, over a million pound a year between them, from automatically rising with inflation, and voted down the possibility of even discussing it. Now get this, the free school meals budget for children who might otherwise go hungry is £660,000 a year, and that's too much. The Tories' allowances are over a million pounds a year, and that's not enough. Are you beginning to get the picture yet? The motion to boost the authorities' free school meals budget made by independent opposition councillor Gareth Mackay last Thursday, was directed to the council executive who appeared unlikely to approve it. It's a Tory council. An independent councillor th thought that it might be a good idea to raise the amount that they spent on hungry children's meals from 82p. Tory councillors said, no, that's fine with me. 82p sounds like what a meal would cost. And oh, by the way, can I, a millionaire, have more money on my allowances? Are you getting the picture yet?
In the full council meeting last Thursday, September the 22nd, independent opposition councillor Gareth Mackay said, in my day job, I have an intimate knowledge of the wholesale prices of food. We hear that many families have got to make the choice of heating or eating, and that's becoming, even with government support, all the more prevalent in the country. He said, I asked one of my schools, my local schools, what they spend on free school meals. And the shocking fact is that once you take out the cost of energy and staffing, the price per child per meal per day is 82 pence. He says, who on earth can go out and buy anything nutritious for 82 pence? This independent councillor implored uh, t uh, the uh, council to do the art of the possible and support his motion to target 11,000 children whose only substantial meal may be their free school meal. And the Tory council said no. Seconds after the free school meals motion was shot down, fellow independent councillor John Baker proposed a motion to forego the inflationary element of the members' allowances increase for this year. And the Tory council said, wow, we don't want to do that. <laughs> While the pay rise had yet to be determined, with inflation so high, the inflationary index is likely to be at least 5%, possibly 10%, a total rise of uh, between 50 and 100,000 pounds on the Tory councillor's allowances. The motion to forego the councillor's allowances was voted down on the Tory-led council, so councillors will see their allowances rise with inflation. The children get nothing. Millionaire conservatives get a pay rise. Are you beginning to get the picture yet? <laughs> I mean, wow. And that was in the Daily Mail. I, uh, I truncated it for you, but the amount of times that the reporter said, uh, reminded us that these were Tory councillors, I just lost count. Good work, that person. East Lothian, Anthony. Good evening. Yes, sir. Well, I just think that uh, we need to get back into the life of, or into the world of real living, which is we're, we're persecuting the uh, promotion of wealth when actually for every pound a wealthy person earns the state is getting 45p of that pound so well the the, the wealth is not in wages wealth is in assets which is uh, taxed at uh, a much lower rate if if at all well okay but we're, we're, we're talking about what are we what are we trying to do are we trying are we trying to encourage wealthy people to set up successful businesses in the United Kingdom and if those businesses are successful which they should be they pay more corporation tax they employ more people they're successful therefore they get bonuses they pay more tax in the UK that tax pays for everything that we want as a state to um, support well, in, well, that's, in that's terms lovely, of nurses etc well that's a lovely way of thinking about it but what tends to happen in this country because we have such a dismally small uh, research and development people who run businesses and this is well known internationally in this country we have a problem with it they they don't reinvest in their business they take the money and they reward it to themselves as bonuses and share buybacks <laughs> yeah, okay but a successful business employs more people who get paid more they pay more tax we, we well, denigrate but it, but the, bankers' the pay, bonuses. The paying more part is not necessarily so, as we've recently found. There are, uh, the, the amount of industries that are having to go on strike because they're being faced with a pay cut is too okay. long to okay. mention okay. in that, a brief that, that's, three that, those are public show. Services. Those are public services who are, who I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, we're talking about uh, public services asking for a 15% pay rise, and I absolutely support nurses and uh, medical staff on the front line for everything that they do. But as public services, they need to. Uh, we're talking about um, people on benefit having a 10% pay rise or a 10% increase in their benefit when the, the actual um, rate of increase in, in wages at the moment is about 5%. So we're living in pretty abnormal times and it has to be said that inflation is running at an, an abnormally high rate. 
but if you're if you're continuing if you're wanting to support benefits increasing by 10 percent when the national wage is increasing by five percent there comes a crossover when those who are paying tax are generating not enough money through that tax to afford those who are on benefits having an abnormally high increase. And it's, it's a harsh that, reality well, from guess, where we are right now. Well, the reality is that um, almost half of those on universal credit are actually in work. So what, we're do what we are actually doing in this country is subsidising the companies that you're espousing to pay their workers such a small amount of money that the state actually has to step in so they don't starve to death. Well, that has a problem. That, that in itself is a problem. If, if companies are paying less than the living wage, which is set by government, then that is a problem. So that that is not a that is that that is an absolute problem. Well, you can't. So, but the living wage is is not something that an ordinary family can uh, get a by can get by comfortably on. And and those are the very companies who uh, whose um, whose policies you are supporting. They're the same people. Let's have Harrow, Jonathan. Uh, can you hear me, Nick? No. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, when you start this saw this uh, evening, one of your texters said that. Jonathan from Harrow speaks my brains. Did yeah. you read that? I read that, yeah. And also, another quick thing I want to say is that a few weeks ago, uh, a caller called up LBC and said to uh, one of your great presenters, uh, he quoted you, this caller, said, as Nick Abbott would say, the walkie-cokie, and that's not you, it's me. Oh, that's you, is it? Walkie-talkie. The walkie-cokie. <laughs> it, it was to uh, David Lammy. He said, uh, as Nick Abbott would say, the walkie-cokie, but... Right. I'll I tell you a few things. I was you're, chatting with the... You're claiming that one as your own, are you? I, I mean, listen, I was chatting with... When I was chatting with the boy mm -hmm. who put, picks up the phone, I said to him this. <laughs> boy. <laughs> Go on. I, yeah, I, I, because I voted two times. I voted uh, Conservative Party. Mm -hmm. You voted twice. You're only supposed not to vote in, once. Not, no, no, in 2070, because I, <clears throat> I believe... Propaganda about Jeremy Corbyn, you say. Mm. And then I vote Brexit also. And now I do not have Zab, okay? And my uh, my washing machine break down, but I can't afford new ones. So this evening, even as Conservative Party voter myself, and you, this is called poetic justice. You are reading out all of the criminals and gangsters in that party. Yeah. And I am literally having to wash my underpants in a bucket. Oh, way too much information there, Jonathan. Because I can't buy the washing machine. So I went to a pound shop mm -hmm. and nobody's wearing the mask because they're all sick. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and because I'm an intelligent person. Yeah, you went to the pound shop to see if you could buy a washing machine. They cost way no, more than that. Oh, a bucket. A bucket. A bucket. A bucket. Right. And I have to wash the underpants in it because yeah, I, as you I said. cannot get a zab now. I was, I was in a shop a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and the security said to me, "Could you keep it down?" Because I was telling one of the uh, customers that, that because we were chatting, I wasn't just—I don't just go up to stranger yeah. and talk to them. You say. were telling them about your underwear. Go on. No, I, I was telling them that this country is political militant feminist. It's like the feminist Taliban in this country. You is see. it? And what makes you say that? He's, he asked, <laughs> because the, fearful that because you might explain it. Go on. I do not have a sexist bone in my body. But? but no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, is, this country is like 1984 now. You Facebook this, you tweet this. They, the police come in the Daily Mail, they say, and also on the Twitter, people come after you because it's right. a racist, well, keep, uh, mitogony, yeah. keep your uh, dirty underwear to yourself, uh, Jonathan, and I wish you all the best. Canuck. Hello, Mel. All right. Uh, mate, how are you? What? I said, how are you? Oh, I'm super. Thanks for asking. I would just say, the, the thing that's buggered the Tories up is uh, what happened in the vote for the next leader when Sunak thought he would beat Truss but wouldn't beat Mordant. So they lent Truss votes to push Truss into second place. And he come unstuck. 
I don't think he thought he could beat Morden. Right. Well, I. Uh, that's my that's my gist what, on it from what I was watching. I have no idea what to say to that. And I think Morden would have probably made a decent prime minister. Oh, please. I actually like her. <laughs> what What do you like about her? I just like her. I <laughs> heard her talk. She can. I I seen her absolutely destroy uh, Raina. And, and, and the SNP... Well, I didn't see that myself. You talk, I, I, only, that. I only have your word on that. It's all on YouTube. On YouTube, YouTube. Another giant right. waste of time. I do not need another giant waste of time, thanks, Mel. I've spent <laughs> endless hours on uh, Twitter like an idiot. I, well, I go on YouTube to watch the marching again from the funeral. I, I love watching that. You, you like watching funerals? No, I love the marching. Marching at funerals. Um, I just love the marching. Well, you, right. Well, you've got to have a hobby. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mel. Oh three. Nothing weird about that at all. Uh, Birmingham. Mark. How are you doing, Nick? Right, mate. Yeah. Good. Sorry, thanks. Birmingham. Birmingham, Mike. Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do a survivor, mate. I'll, I'll give you a five. But you come and get less trust and take it back down there, mate. Okay. Will do. Cab for right. cab for mistrust. Yep. That is. Was in it. That's all she's <laughs> worth. Anyway, mate. Right. Okay. I think she should do the right thing and step down. But they should make her go on an IVA and pay for the debt that she's got the country in. IVA. Intravenous. In oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, whichever, yeah. Right, okay. All right, keep thinking, Mark. Thanks a lot, mate. Does anybody know what that was about? No. There's something about Liz Truss. Oxted, hello, Pat. Hi. Pat. Nick, have you got an answer to this? If we send all these people out to Uganda... Rwanda. Rwanda, I mean, yes. How are we going to keep them there? Because if they don't like it, they're just going to come back, <laughs> aren't they? They're just going to come back like they did from God knows where they managed to get to get yeah. to Cali. Like a rubber ball, they'll come bouncing back to us. Rock and roll! Get Bobby V on the phone, he can sing it to us. Do you think that perhaps if it's a nice luxury place that they're going to, mm. that might keep them? I might go out and join them. Yeah, I believe the uh, weather is lovely at this time of year. I think I want a bit more than the weather, wouldn't you? Um, well, you'd need to be uh, thoroughly refreshed. Booze. Um, but apart from that, do, I mean, do they have Sky Sports? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's just that I'm concerned they're going to get back to Cali and we're going to end up with the same problem. Same problem. We might yeah. as well have kept them here in the first place and right. saved the money. Yeah, but the money is, is as nothing compared to the political capital that they will bank when they wave that first flight goodbye, because their fans will love it. Well, where are they going to hide when they all get back? Where are they going to hide? Yes, those that are waving them out there, where are they going to hide when they decide that they don't like it in Rwanda, so they make their way back here to Cali? Yeah. Um, I don't know, Pat. Oxted, perhaps. Coming to a location like near a you few soon. Of them. They seem to be pretty ingenious. Well, I think we've to, got a few. Yeah, to, to make it over here, they'd, uh, they'd have to be um, in ingenious and... Um, well, they've been ingenious. They've managed to get industrious. them God knows where, haven't they? Yeah, God knows where. Well, if yes, I were you, if yes. I were you, Pat, I'd be alarmed. Are you, you alarmed? I've got the answer, Ivan. I have got no answers. I only have questions. Oh dear. Well, carry on the good work. Okay, we'll do, Pat. Thanks a lot. An unsolicited testimonial. Good work, she said. Wood Green. Hello, Wiggly. Hello. Is your name uh, is your name Wiggly? Well, actually, look, my first name's Bob. Um, but <laughs> oh, Bob Wiggly. Wiggly. Right. Okay. But um, I, I believe because you uh, earlier alluded to the fact that we might not have a general election. Yeah. Now, uh, constitutionally, we are bound to have one every five years. Um, 300 years ago, it was down to the king. Then it became a seven-year, and finally they settled for five. 
They brought in this Parliament Act, and uh, they've got rid of that. But it is now, uh, after five years, the uh, Parliament must be uh, curtailed. Mm -hmm. They must be uh, given about a week, a month, I believe, to clear up parliamentary business. Mm -hmm. And then they have up to six weeks for the campaign. Right. Or, Or what? Or what? Well, there's no or what about it. That is what's supposed to happen. Supposed to happen. Bingo. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then what? Well, we'll have a revolution. (laughs) We'll we'll have another Oliver Cromwell. Yeah, I seriously seriously doubt that. Because there will be some sort of um, uh, either real or imagined emergency that will... um, that not real imagined emergency. Liz Liz Truss will be very clear that the emergency means that the the vote has been cancelled for the foreseeable future. No, she couldn't do that. There, 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 would, there would be uproar in Parliament. Even oh, part- oh, uproar, you say? I believe so, yes, I believe there would be. <laughs> uproar, yeah, people might well, touch. In actual, fact, in actual fact, you're quite right uh, that the Constitution's in a mess, because that's what you're alluding to. We should have a written Constitution which compels Parliament to call an election. Yeah. You know, all, of these, all of these non-written-down rules depend on the good chap principle, in much the That's same way right. as, as Donald Trump could uh, just blast through any, um, well, any uh, uh, you know, normal, yes, or any normal right, behavior, right. because nobody had ever thought that somebody would behave as he did. Like well, no, <laughs> like a point ranting point. child. You didn't have to say that uh, people would try to steal the election, that that might be uh, illegal, because uh, nobody thought that anybody would try it. And then uh, here comes a, a fellow that thinks that the rules don't apply to him, just like well, this bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, wait, 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 wait. when Jefferson wrote the American Constitution, he put the power uh, in, in the hands of the president, calling him the chief magistrate, and he could pick the Supreme Court which makes it a political court. Ours shouldn't be. It should be... Uh, why does it all take agreement between the parties? I accept that it's a mess. But I think that, that, that's what's supposed to happen. Yes, yeah, supposed, supposed. I, uh, I, I, previous uh, experience is not necessarily... Uh, does not necessarily foretell well, don't, don't, what might happen in the future. Well, no general election has been cancelled in my lifetime, and I'm 87. Right, well, how, 87 years old. Yeah, but how many uh, how many um, MPs have um, come into power without any of the electorate voting for them in your lifetime? Uh, oh, no. You, 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 have, you have, to have, a, have to have a by-election or an election. Yeah. Well, uh, an MP, well, an well, MP just can't well, you come don't. into power. No, the I'm, local party was call it... Must, must, must you, be you keep telling me what you're supposed to do, but we're, we're beyond supposed. Well, we're not beyond. Well, supposed. we are. This, this government has taken us to a, a more right-wing economic position, as I described uh, earlier on, than any other government in a, a major economy. More right-wing than Brazil. No other country in the world has, at this moment, a more economically right-wing government than we have. And absolutely no one voted for them. Zero. Not even the people that who are uh, Tory um, members voted for what's happening right now. They just made it up. As though they have some sort of mandate. They don't. No one asked for Liz Truss to be Prime Minister at all in the electorate. Outside of... Um, a uh, bunch of red-faced boars that prop up the golf club bar, apart from those people. The rest of us, the little people, we didn't vote for any of this. And no one voted for this uh, kind of economic insanity that we are uh, embarked on at the moment. Zero. So it is like a coup. They have taken over. No one voted for them. There's no point in saying that, um, oh, it's supposed to be like this, it's supposed to be like that, so we can rest easy, and it will always, uh, you know, act in the future as it has in the past, because that ain't necessarily so. I mean, do I actually think that the uh, current government will stage an actual coup and prevent any future elections? Well, no. But then I wouldn't have predicted that um, of anything that Donald Trump tried to get away with. And I wouldn't have predicted that um, Liz Truss would 
would give millionaires a tax cut and fund it by taking away the benefits of the poorest people in society. I wouldn't have expected that either, but here we are. Feltham, hello, Ian. Uh, hello, Nick. I was just listening to you talk about Angela Rayner and Keir Starmer, and I have to disagree with you. About what? You, you need, well, about we need to change people from voting Tory to Labour. Oh. We need to change people who didn't vote at all to vote Labour. And that means persuasion and inspiring people. And you don't be a boring old fart with a knighthood. You have to have someone with energy, commitment, who can inspire you to say, we can do something better. And that's Angela Rayner. Right, OK, well, Angela Rayner is on board. So, problem solved. No, she, no, she, she should be the leader. Not, not um, the dummy. <laughs> we dummy. need someone who could not the dummy. No, we need someone. I don't think to, anybody's ever described her as a dummy before. No, Keir Starmer's a dummy. Someone to energise. Look, I was in the army. Sixty percent of efficiency is by morale, by inspiration. Follow me, lads. We'll go. Not oh dear, there's another boy bloke in a suit. What are we going to do now? Oh my God, Ian. All we want, I, I, I keep hearing this from people. All you want now is to be entertained. Boris Johnson has screwed up politics in this country forever. That's all people want now. They just want an entertainer. They want a funny bloke off the telly. It's painful. You remember what politicians used to be like? They used to be like um, John Major. Boring! They used to be like Gordon Brown. They used to be boring, diligent, uh, detail-hungry people. That's what we used to have in this country. And it's really bizarre when you look back at like old clips of old M uh, old PMs and listen to what they sound like. It's, it, it's, it's like they're a different species. And now we've got um, the, the, the hangover from this bloke. <laughs> and everybody wants to have one of those. Everybody wants to, like another funny bloke off the telly. Like, like we want to be amused all the time. Do me a favour. I keep saying it. It's you got, you got a choice. And as for the problem of people not voting, it should be the law in this country that you do vote. But the Conservative Party is never going to do that because it would not be in their interests. So that should be one thing that an incoming Labour Party does, and it might be initially unpopular for the people that just want to sit at home because it's just so boring. Uh, you know, they're all the same. If Australia can do it, then we can do it too. It should be the law that every single person in this country votes in every election. Why not? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a, an hour at most of your time once every five years. Is that really too much to ask? Right, grip onto something firm because you're not going to like this. So where does Liz Trust get her ideas from, you might be wondering. <laughs> Liz Trust gets her ideas from books. Specifically, books written by a bloke called Rick Perlstein. I'll assume that that's how you pronounce it, not Perlstein. 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 I prefer Perlstein. I'm going to go with Rick Perlstein. Now, he's written books about... Uh, trickle-down economics as practiced by her hero, Ronald Reagan. And she has drawn conclusions about how great it was when Ronald Reagan attempted to trickle-down uh, economics. And this is why we're being led down this path. Unfortunately, <laughs> one of Liz Truss's favorite historians, Rick Perlstein, has said that the Prime Minister has completely misunderstood his work. What? Rick Perlstein, who has written books on the American presidents Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan, said that Liz Truss's misreading of his analysis is, quotes, mind-blowing. Yowza. Many comparisons have been drawn between the new Prime Minister's economic policies and the Reaganomics strategy pursued by the President in the late 1980s, which has been critiqued by Perlstein, who specializes in US conservatism of the late 20th century. Last year, 
when she was foreign secretary, the trust bot told the Times that she, quotes, read anything by Pearlstein, but the historian told the uh, Times that he is flabbergasted by the conclusion that she has drawn. He says, I feel terribly, terribly guilty. I did my best to explain that the ideas she's proposing were terrible for the United States. He said of the strategy, if another country that did not have America's advantages of having the reserve currency of the world would adapt it, it would be, in many ways, ten times worse. Pearlstein said that the rise of truss had been a weird experience for him after he was told in August that her remark in the interview last year was being used to bolster her leadership credentials and to suggest that she understood what Reagan understood. Pearlstein is in fact an outspoken critic of the former Republican president. He said the idea that someone will come up across the account that I offer of the cynicism, intellectual vacuity and just basic emptiness of the promises that were made by Ronald Reagan in this regard and say, jolly good, this is what I'm going to try for England. It's kind of mind-blowing, he said. Pearlstein, a New York Times best-selling author who's often appeared on books of the year lists across the US, said Reagan tried to bamboozle the public, adding he basically created this fantasy about how to create a prosperous and dynamic society, one of the tenets of which was this fantasy about lowering taxes lowering taxes on the rich, creating prosperity for everyone. Oh my God! We're being led by a crazy person that thinks that when an historian says policies were guilty of cynicism, intellectual vacuity and basic emptiness, she thinks that's a good thing. Maybe she read the books upside down. Maybe she didn't read historian Rick Perlstein and actually listened to Rick Parfit out of status quo. You know, whatever you want, whatever you need. You can't have because that would be a handout. Rock and roll! We're being led by a woman who says her guiding light is an historian who had to intervene to tell her that she doesn't understand his books. He should have included more pictures. Can someone turn Liz Truss off and on again. See if that works. <sighs> what a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, Nick. Good Jan. evening. Good evening. <laughs> I I'm ringing up to, to see what you think about this, um, what they call this tw twin, like they're, they're calling it a twindemic. There's so many oh. new words being um, coming on, like fluorona. The flu and shot, I, yeah. I, I don't know whether... I'm, I'm called up. You know, I keep getting texts and messages from mm -hmm. the NHS and yeah. my doctor's surgery. For my doctor's surgery, um, about um, having... Having, having the flu. The, no, the, the, yeah, they call it the... Um, the, the, the the, the twindemic, yes. the flu and the COVID. Well they, well, they don't want to give it give it to you. They want to prevent you from getting it. They're going to give well, you the uh, the flu shot and your uh, booster at no, the same time. No, I never time. have the flu shot. I never have the flu shot. And Why don't you have the flu shot? I've never had it. I Why take, not? I take, um, my late mother was naturopathic, so I follow a naturopathic path with certain things. And now, Naturopathic. When I people, how how naturopathic. is that going to help? Well, yeah, because um, well, what do you take? What what does what do you mean naturopathic? What do you take to avoid the flu? I, I take a thing called Allison, uh, uh, a substance. It's like the heart of garlic that's stabilised in a <laughs> thing. It's done, done by a British company. Oh, Allison. Okay, and how does they that send work? It around the world, they yeah, send oh, it sure. around the world. Yeah. High dose. They mm. they don't sell it in the shops. The high dose. Right, and and how's but, that working? But, how's that working out for you? Well, I, I, I've learned to make my own, <laughs> like my mother used to do. Yeah, but my how, how does do. it work? Does it is it a success? How does it work? Oh, the heart of garlic. You know, it, it it boosts the immunity and it, it protects you from things they. they yes, eat. Jan, listen to me. Do let let me put it more clearly. Do you ever get the flu? Mm, no. That sounds like a yes. 
No, I don't. No, but, but no, I, I am concerned. I'm concerned because everyone I'm asking about yeah. people who, who are they going to take it? Because mm-hmm. I'm looking. To, I have. I want to do a bit of research, but I just wonder what you you research. think. Research. Just take the flu shot. No, I never take the flu. It's the it's the virus thing that I'm concerned about. Well. They call it fluorona. They're calling it fluorona. I never have both yeah. at the same time. And they've got different views. There's some saying you, that you shouldn't have the two at the same time, and others are saying... Oh. So just I tell you what, Jan, stop doing your own research. Those uh, numbskulls on the internet don't know what they're talking about. No, ask, do, ask, the, your, I, ask your GP. She will know. Or he, sexist. Thanks a lot, Jan. All the best. Just a little pinprick... That'll keep you going for the show. Rock and roll! Crawley. Hello, Vinny. Hello, Nick. Vinny. I would like to talk about Liz Truss and the uh, policy to... Yes, go ahead. Well, I think the main point you're missing, or perhaps some of your callers seem to have been missing, is that growth doesn't come necessarily from reducing the corporation tax all that does is allow smaller and medium businesses to access the new growth that's about to come through the deregulation of policies. It's going to create market potential, which we can all get involved with, which is, which I'm excited about. Why I'm fully, fully in support of Liz Truss and uh, all the policies and all the Conservative Party right now. OK, I, I understood some of that, Mark. Well, I, I understood some of the words, but not in the order in which you used them. Joining us now to discuss whether the Conservative Party can recover from the fiscal fallout is David Maddox. David is the political editor of Express.co.uk. Hello, David. Hi, there, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. You're in Birmingham, or I as am. the leader of the Young Conservatives would say, uh, you're in that dump. What's, well, the, uh, what's the mood uh, there like? The same, uh, all my family are from this area, and uh, I'm a great fan of Birmingham and Wolverhampton and uh, the West Midlands in general. So, uh, yeah, I was uh, I was glad that uh, the kid was run out of town for that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what's the mood there like now? Well, it was, uh, you can imagine from the various comments which come, there's uh, quite a divide. Mm. amongst uh, the people attending this conference. There's some who are very happy and fairly steadfast on what's going on. In fact, I've just literally, to speak to you, stepped out of a dinner where Patrick Minford, the oh. economist behind all this, was speaking and uh, was was joyful. Did he make, his, any, uh, did he make any sense? He's the chap, let's he remember. Yeah, no, he's that he's, he's a brilliant man. He's a brilliant man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm going yeah, to I'll have to get a, hang on a minute. I'll have to get a dictionary and look up the word brilliant because it obviously doesn't mean what I think it does. He's the fella that said if we could only leave the European Union, the cost of living would go down by 8% on day one. That's that chap, isn't it? Well, yes. you know, I mean, uh, unfortunately, in between, we've had a COVID pandemic uh, and a war, which uh, right. has made things a little bit difficult. On I, that I know what you're going to say, so, David. It's Jeremy Corbyn's fault. No, I'm not going to say that at all. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, in fact, you, you, you should be blaming Jeremy for giving the Conservatives an 80 seat majority, which is... Well, it's that, it's that other genius, Daniel Hannan, who said this week that the market's reaction was had nothing to do with what Liz Truss blurted out. It was, was in fact, the market's realisation that there might, in future, be a Labour government. <laughs> so, yes, well, that, that, that was obviously a confederation of although, cranks. Although, although, actually, I have to say that, you know, the markets go up and down. Uh, we've seen Not it before. Not like this. Come well, off it, mate. Yeah, Not I've like this. Not I've seen it before. I, I, when? I, I, I my, when I have you seen... Of, when? I when? cut my CP of a financial crisis. It was uh, much worse back then. I mean, it actually know, wasn't. We, 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 I, I'm going to correct you there. I, I don't know much yeah. about economics, but I do know that the markets did I, not I, shift I, I, in such dramatic fashion when the uh, the last uh, financial crisis happened in 2007 I, and I, I 8. Spent, didn't go up and down like that. And, and Bank of Scotland, HBOS, uh, w- watching them collapse. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, uh, we're not talking about banks collapsing and all the rest of it. No, what we were talking about... Wait a minute. What we were talking about is the collapse of the pensions of 80% of the people in this country. Now, that's pretty important to Tories, isn't it? The markets and the currency are already recovering, so... 
But it, know, it only recovered because... Oh, we're going to shout yeah. at each other constantly. Yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> only recovered because the Bank of England stumped up £65 billion pounds of our money. Well... Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they, they've stumped up more for, for all sorts of other things. I mean, we've oh, we stumped well. up vastly more for COVID, which, of course, is behind this wretched inflation crisis. Yeah, but COVID That's wasn't a self-inflicted wound. Yes, it was. The lockdown was a self-inflicted wound. It was completely a self-inflicted wound. So, you know, the second and third lockdowns should never have happened, and now we're paying the price for it. And uh, that was one of the reasons. Of course, the Tory MPs, they won't ever admit it, but that's one of the reasons I got rid of Boris. Uh, yeah, um, well, I think they'd just, he'd probably still be there if he didn't try to um, elevate somebody who uh, appeared to be a sex pest. Well, he'd already elevated him. <laughs> well, precisely. Uh, I mean, I, I, actually, I think he was on his way out anyway. I think that was just, uh, they were looking for a final straw and they, they found it. All right. Now, um, in Birmingham, you said that some MPs are uh, seem to be delighted. They seem to be un mm. under the spell of this trickle-down economics nonsense that's never worked anywhere it's ever been tried. But, you know, why why, uh, no, no, why let history... It's growth economics, growth economics. I think you're, you're, you're getting confused there. Well, uh, I, it's well not I'm trickle not. Down Trick, trickle down is what the uh, Prime Minister... Uh, uh, it was a phrase the Prime Minister uttered herself. That's the basis yeah, of, all of, the, it's, of it's, all of her it's movements. It's essentially growth economics. You know, it's it's a thing called the Laffer curve. If you reduce taxes oh. to a certain level, then uh, your actual take goes up. And in fact, it worked when they reduced 50p to 45p. The take went significantly up. But, but it absolutely the, didn't. Rishi Sunak himself, who, who has it just did. been in charge of the nation's money, he said that it didn't make the one iota of difference. Well, uh, George Osborne said it did, and uh, the Treasury said it did. So, you know... I mean, Rishi Sunak said all sorts of things, but of course he's a loser in a fairly tough leadership race. You know, is, so there a mood, is there a, a mood among Tory MPs now that the... Because the, they, of course, preferred Rishi Sunak for the very obvious reason that he seemed to actually know what he was well, doing. Well, they didn't, did they? They didn't really well, they know did. anybody. They, they did absolutely they? did. There, there were more of them voted for him in the kind of rounds, but not a majority of them. I mean... You know, it was it was actually almost a kind of freeway split when uh, we got to the final three. So he hadn't won over his colleagues. I, mean, uh, I remember when that particular when the race started. You know, his team were saying he was going to get over 200 Tory MPs back in. He didn't get anywhere near. I mean, I like Rishi, so you know, I'm not going to really take him off. But he was the loser <laughs> in a very nasty leadership race, and that's it. You know, I. I I may well have voted for it. I've been a Tory member, but I'm not, so there you go. <laughs> right. Do you think that it's actually a sensible way to choose a leader of a party to leave it to a raggle-taggle bunch of bores who prop up the bar at a golf club? Well, you could say the same about the uh, Labour Party, really. I mean, uh, different clubs, but, you know, I mean, that's how, that's how leaders are chosen. I mean, at least the Tory MPs whittle it down to two. Labour, you've actually got a full one. In fact, that's exactly how they ended up with Jeremy Corbyn. So David, are, are we engaging in whataboutery here? We were no, talking no, about no, the Tories no, yeah, yeah, and suddenly no, you're no, talking no, about no, Jeremy no, Corbyn. No, no, I'm just saying that um, my point, my wider point, if you like, is is that, uh, you know, parties have to pick a leader in a certain way. They have membership and that's it. Yeah. You know, and uh, Labour throw more candidates to the members. Labour, uh, the Conservatives only do two. But, you know, in the end, it's the members who pick the party leader. Right, and they have done. And we've got Liz Truss, who has, yeah. who believes Woman that she... <laughs> OK. She <laughs> believes that she has a, a mandate. Who does she have a mandate from? Well, she's largely working on the 2019 uh, election mandate. We have a constitution where people elect a party. We don't have a presidential constitution. You must have heard all this before. And, uh, and that's all right. I mean, yeah, but no, really nobody, she, nobody voted. She, yeah. Nobody voted. No, no, the interesting thing is, I think she is actually closer to the 2019 manifesto than Boris was. And that's, uh, so there is a mandate there, yes. There absolutely isn't for anything that she's doing right now. People would not have voted. People of the North, this red wall, this mythical red wall, would not have voted for a woman who's going to drop the top tax rate and reenact austerity. So there's absolutely no way that people voted for that. Well, of course, before that, we uh, we didn't have a pandemic and we didn't have a war in Ukraine, you know. I mean, that's... 
David, ev- uh, everything no, no, is, no, 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 everything is someone right, else's no, no, fault. But, uh, actually, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm not a Conservative member, so, you know, but interestingly, on the top right thing, what I think is uh, quite accurate is that their communication around this has been woeful and absolutely abysmal and people should be sacked, frankly. Um, well, on that but, subject, but, what... But, um... but, 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 let me finish. But... They should be, uh, but we should be welcoming people in here who are rich and are willing to pay more tax. Just remember... Oh, the rich aren't La- willing to Labour, pay more tax. That's La- the whole point. Yeah, they, when they... when Labour was at their most successful, Mandelson said, I'm absolutely relaxed about people being filthy rich. Yeah, but that had nothing to do with tax. Well, it did, because they came here and they paid tax and they spent their money. Now and the... that's, why that's why when you reduce the top rate... The actual take goes up. But it doesn't. It doesn't, though. That's a fundamental misunderstanding. You you keep saying that, but it's not true. When you reduce the top rate of tax, the tax tax take does not go up. I'm just quoting the Treasury, you know, just tell the Treasury. Well, I I don't believe that you are quoting the Treasury. I think you may be misinformed. I I, I, I sat through the briefing uh, with the Treasury officials, not the political ones, but the normal Treasury officials, where they said exactly that. Well, I bet a small amount of money that that is not true, but let's just uh, put that aside yeah. and uh, carry on. Here's, here's a list of people that uh, I've put together. Um, her own MPs, including Michael Gove, the Confederation of British yeah, Industry. Yeah, the assassin in chief. Every yeah. economics expert, apart from the genius Patrick Minton, the Resolution Foundation, uh, the President of the United States of America, the Institute of Fiscal Studies, the Office for Budget Responsibility, the Bank of England, the markets themselves that she reveres so much, a majority of the people of the United Kingdom all say that she's got it wrong. H- how can one person so inexperienced think that she's got it right? Well, she's not inexperienced. She's held five cabinet positions, including one in the Treasury. So we'll see. I mean, she's got two years to we'll prove it. We'll see. If, if it's wrong, then we'll have a Labour government. It seems like that they're just playing a game, like a fantasy no, I game. No, uh, there, there, there are plenty who are happy with it. You know, the IEA were uh, happy the, with it. The, <laughs> the, well, you know, I mean, the I IEA. Quote, you know, I, can people, I can quote people on the other side of the argument. If you, you know, if you, right. if you like. Do they you all? I mean? Do they all live at fifty-five Tufton Street? <laughs> I don't know. No, they don't. No. Right. Okay. Um, so, what's um, what's the schedule then in Birmingham from uh, tomorrow on? Well, you'll be you'll be delighted to know that quasi quartings up tomorrow. So uh, that's going to be an interesting an interesting uh, thing on the main stage. Uh, that main and, stage and is uh, it's not open for very long, is it? What's happening no, there? It's not. Well, we're all trying to work that one out, to be honest. But uh, it's not very good for newspaper deadlines. But uh, although it... luckily, luckily, I just as an online man, I just put it up as it goes along. But it's. Uh, yeah, yeah I, but I'm oddly, I mean, tell, tell us what it's people. normally like, because normally the main stage is, uh, is the, the, the sort of epicentre of a mm. conference, and it, it works from uh, early in the day to, uh, you know, late in the afternoon, mm. and it's speech after speech, but um, this time around, it's only open for, is it two hours a day? Two and a half hours, I think it is, or two hours, yes. Rather uh, strange. Which is odd, which is rather strange, I agree. I've not, it's, uh, uh, it's not something I've come across before. There's an awful lot of fringe events. Uh, seems to be that the more interesting speeches have been made at fringe events, but that's not unusual. Um, I always thought the main stage was often very boring and tepid anyway, certainly in the last decade, on all the main parties. Uh, and maybe they've realised that they're not getting the headlines that they wanted from mm. it. Yeah, it's not running away, is it? It looks a bit like running away. No, no, because, uh, because they're all doing the rounds in the fringes, which are packed out. So they're not running away. I, I don't know what they've decided on the optics of all this so and when does um liz trust speak uh she speaks on wednesday which is going to be interesting because i think because of a train strike a lot of people are wondering whether they have to go home on tuesday night is boris johnson going to speak uh not that i'm aware of not even at the sidelines not that i'm aware of it's not to say he won't although actually i'd be surprised if he does uh, just, uh, just, uh, just finally, mm. and this is just a, a, a personal, um, a, a petty gripe of mine. 
Who came up with this phrase that must be repeated ad nauseum, that the Prime Minister has been very clear that? Yes, uh, that's part of the uh, team that she's got around her, which people are asking questions about. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd, uh, I, I, if you're looking at B2 to fed that, then... Uh, uh, you probably asked the wrong person. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, good to talk to you, David. Thanks for that. Yeah, That's uh, okay. da David Maddox, political editor of express.co.uk. Uh, Greenford, hello, Paul. Hello, Nick. Yeah, I think with, with Liz Truss surviving Gov's um, Night of the Long Knives, which he was going to do, but I think they're going to keep her. But all we can do is listen to LBC, Nick Abbott, and uh, hope Putin doesn't um, strike us. But I'm hopeful. I don't think he'll get that bad, will it? <laughs> get that bad well, i don't know which which one of the uh, scenarios that you've just outlined are you referring to all of them well, or? well if gov if gov did get in around christmas time would yeah. that be so bad if if michael gove took over as premier around christmas time would that be so bad is that your does question? That, does that does that compare to Putin nuking us? Do you know what I mean? No, I they're don't. Like, you know, they're I absolutely attacked, do no, no, do not know what you mean. Absolutely no. no idea what you're talking about right now. No, no, no. I've got to improve on that. Sorry. I'll yeah, you, say, you, yeah, you certainly I'll do. Say, a, a lot of work there, uh, Paul. I'm giving you homework now. Two in a row on the Nicky Abbott show. <laughs> Isleworth. Hello, Ravi. Yes, how are you, Nick? I am super. Thanks for asking. Right. Nick, they say a week is a long time in politics. Now, this time next week on Saturday, I'll call you up mm. and our new chance will be Rishi Sunak. Let me explain. Now, what's going to happen in the next five days? Liz Truss cannot go back on her word. She will sack her chancellor. Right. Rishi Sunak has to bite his ego and she's got to apologize to him. And he has to come back and take charge of the economy. Okay, that's like uh, all right. Well, you keep thinking, uh, Ravi. Excellent work there, man. He's going to bite his ego. Well, if you, <laughs> if you can do that, why ever leave the house? I don't think Rishi Sunak is going to be uh, doing anything of the sort. I think Rishi Sunak has made a nest of cashmere hoodies in which he's going to hibernate for the winter. And she ain't going to fire Quasimodo. No way. But apart from that, uh, Ravi, completely correct in every respect. Hampstead, Kevin. Yeah, hi, Nick. I, I'm kind of, kind of like humour there. You know, I'm an expert of 15 years, you know. You're a what? I, I can't get anywhere to live, Nick. You're a you know, what? I can't get a council house. Can I finish, Nick? Well, I don't know you what... You come in there with your, your dulcet tones. No. I can't get anywhere to live. Yeah, back up. And, um, Wait I, a minute. So what are I... Sorry? You're, a, you're an ex-what? vet right do you understand that i've served my country for 15 years there um you know i i am betwixt between b and b and i can't get somewhere to put my head down you know since i come out of the forces and let me tell you you know i hear you every night you know left wing propaganda no <laughs> tell you something nick we have i'm a not on every night i'm not i'm not country. on every night do you understand night. that nick? i'm not on every night kevin but no, well, listen, you can be account. smart. J Nick, would you agree with me? We have a housing crisis in this country. Uh, yes. Go on. Go on. Would you, what? Like, would you like to enlighten on it? Enlighten in what way? Well, so, so, oh, do you know something? There you go again. This Abbott kind of, you're a comedy act on a serious radio. So, okay, I'll enlighten you then, Nick, because obviously you can't enlighten me. You haven't got the, the, the kind of journalistic... You know, I don't know where you've done your... I don't know where your journalistic views came from. I don't know where you studied. <laughs> Let me tell you. We Kevin, have... Kevin, you are all over the shop, mate. What are you talking about? <laughs> First of all, you call up with an attitude that you could see from space. And second, you appear to be saying something that I would be on your side about. And yet you team, seem determined to pick a fight with me. Um, and third, you l have said that you listen to me all the time that I'm on. And yet you don't like what I do. Which seems a bit weird, I've got to tell you. I mean, if I didn't like somebody on the radio, I would simply not listen to them. But that's me. 
You've chosen another path, Kevin. And um, I wish you all the best. Just when you think that everything is going smoothly, a bump in the road. <laughs> Does anybody have any idea what that was about? No. Brad emails, Nick, mate, you already ripping, spelt wrong, Liz, spelt wrong, and Tories, spelt wrong, apart, ink, not even dried, spelt wrong, on her contract, and not giving, spelt wrong, her a chance. They have a clear mandate from the general, spelt wrong, public, to cut taxes, make us better off, what would LIBOR do? And it goes on on like that for quite some while. <laughs> uh, and it continues to not make sense. I have never seen so much squiggly red under misspelt words in such a short space. That's amazing. You're a very special person, Brad. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You're not related to that last bloke by any chance, are you? Belfast. Hello, Brendan. Oh, hello. Um, straight in this time. Ready, ready. Almost. Are you, you, seem, you, you seem to be saying that after 12 years of Tory story and everything else, that now we're at the precipice of a Labour government. And if we are, then they should uh, absolve all the 12 years of what the Tories have racked the whole shop doing. I've said that. And, well, you seem to be saying that because you're saying that the left-wing union uh, representatives will be waving their arms and don't want Labour to get into power unless they swim in the poison, I think you said. I can't actually quote you you know, no, but what I, you're saying... I think that's not really what I said at all. I, did, I didn't say anything about union leaders. You did? No. You I, did? I, I did, you well, did not? I didn't. Okay. Well, then, here's my... My point is that you can't sacrifice what uh, working men and women who formed unions uh, fought hard over against everything. Yeah, Brendan, you seem to, to have come to this with the idea that I am in some way against unions. You are completely incorrect in every respect. You misheard. You are calling on false pretenses. Okay. Then, uh, if that's so, I apologise, but if, if you listen back and if I listen back, I think <laughs> you did say... No, you did yeah, say that. Uh, well, listen. we can have this argument all day long, Brendan, but I think I would be much clearer on what I say and believe than you would be listening to me on no. the radio while doing something else in Belfast. No, but I listen to this programme, you don't. Well, <laughs> well, that is a good point, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, mate. Ealing, Paul. Good, good evening, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, I was listening, well, you were talking to the guy earlier saying to him about what's the real reason that you voted for Brexit, expecting him to say, well, you know, I just thought he'd just stop all the foreigners coming in. But um, it didn't seem to go that way. But I, I, um, I liked what they were saying about the Australian way that they'd done the immigration thing. And I thought, well, you know, that sounds a good idea. Well, and what, what, ab what about it sounds good? Because that policy well, actually well, that well, policy actually was for to increase immigration. Oh, uh, well, I'm not too sure how it worked, but it's like the, the point system, you know what I mean? If you had family there, you got eight points, and if you was fully qualified, if you was a doctor, you were straight in, or a nurse, or yeah. a hairdresser. Right. But and I thought, well, that, that sounds like a good idea, but when I heard them talking about how... They're going to have a, when we leave, we're going to have a trade deal with this country, that country, and every other country. I got to thinking about the way it, the way this sort of country sort of started many years ago before the um, EU got involved. And it was like people were coming to this country with silk and tea and coffee and trading for whatever, and we were going to their countries and trading whatever, and people were coming here thinking, I like it here, 
I'm going to stay here. And we were doing the same. So I was thinking most probably two, three, four hundred years before the EU come on. And I was thinking we've done it before because we're England, we're Great Britain. We can, we can do it. We've done it before many times. And we can do it again. And that was the thought I yeah, had in my head. OK, well, keep thinking, Paul. <laughs> I have no idea. Thanks a lot, mate. Let's have um, Brighton. Hello, Kevin. Brighton. Oh, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. Kevin, yeah, that's me, I think. Yeah. Oh, Is it? I, I, you what a joy. Think. Um, yes, no, I had to just pull myself together there. Yes, no. Um, yes, no. <laughs> Fantastic. No, just a little thing there. I, I really, it's a little bit off topic, off topic. And what, it's not, what, I know it's what not topic? the, the uh, well, no, there is no topic, but, um, uh, off the top, uh, off the, off the, off the top of the topic. Yeah, um, there's no topic, there's no strategy. There's no strategy, I have no strategy, there's zero strategy. Zero strategy. <laughs> love it. Right, so, so, I'm a really honest person and everything, divorced, you know, going through the child maintenance service. Yes. Um, really good. I'm not going to affect anybody here. It's not, nothing's going to happen. But I, I just done, you know, and everything's online, 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 mm. online. You can't, yeah, you I've can't heard phone about the internet. Anybody. No end of stuff phone. on there. There is no phone no number. Phoning. There is no, no phone no. number. Internet only, yes. Right, so I've got my own little account, my portal and that, and, you know, me and the ex, we're fine, you know, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I finished, finished my limited company and went into PAYE. So I let them know through my portal and through my thing, my change of circumstances, and it's been two and a half years, mate. You've got to listen, right? What, what has been, my wait a minute, income. wait they a minute, wait, two, wait a minute, listen to me, listen, Kevin. Listen, no, listen. you listen, they, what has been two years? They've added my two incomes, so my old limited com company income, they've added to my new income. And now well, they're chasing have me, more money and they're saying I should be paying like 900 it. quid a week or right. something. Well, Ridiculous. That, that sounds like and a, now I'm a in arrears and everything. I mean, uh, it's absolutely fine. Right. You know, don't oh, well, get then, any uh, dramas. Okay, okay then. Well, as long as it's absolutely well, fine. Th thanks a lot, Kevin, for that uh, excruciatingly detailed uh, uh, story. But I do wish you all the best with whatever it is that you're talking about. Which, as you said, have a absolutely nothing to do with what's going on with this show. This is not a complaints forum, but I appreciate it anyway. Uh, let's see what this one's like. Hampton, hello, Michael. Hello. I mean, I think you've got it wrong. Nobody ever said that we shut the doors for people that we needed. We, what we need in this country is people that come in uh, that we need, i.e. doctors, nurses, engineers, technicians. Those are the people we need. Nobody well, ever well, said... It isn't, well, it isn't, Paul. Uh, ben, so, uh, Michael, sorry. Michael, yeah. <laughs> Michael. Well, you've got, yeah. got that right I've got, got there eventually, yeah. Michael. Yeah, those aren't the, uh, the the jobs that we are... Well, I mean, of course, we, it would be nice if we had more doctors, but it would be nice if we didn't have to take them from third world yeah, countries who are in, in, want of, in want of their own doctors. Yeah. We, we need well, people who work on farms. We need people who work in warehouses. We need people who wait tables in restaurants. We need cooks. Yeah, but, but, we need dishwashers, but, but, we need cleaners, we need security people, we need yeah, but, drivers. These are not these high-skill, high-wage people, this sort of fantasy that is being sold to us. Well, where do they live when they come to London and the South East, which is mainly, on £9.50 an hour? Is that what you get paid? You've got a nice... Do you know what rents are? 1000 to £1,500 a month with the communication that you can have, mobile phones, they know what they're walking into. Because you get a bit more money here, and who's going to come and work for £9.50 an hour? Well, the people, the 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 people that used to be here. Specifically, all of the people that used to be here. There's like a million fewer EU, people, uh, EU residents than before Brexit. All of those people, Michael. I mean, this is not, I'm just, not just making it up. It, those are the people that used to be here doing all of those jobs. 1.3 million vacancies we've got. It wasn't, wasn't that long ago. Yeah, Liz Truss has been very clear. She's been very clear that she just fired somebody who may or may not have done something that he shouldn't have ordered. We don't know yet, but Liz Truss has acted decisively.
and robustly. Affirmative. She's been very clear about her robustness. On the other hand, Liz Truss has cost us 300 billion pounds in about two weeks. Is she going to fire herself? Well, let's just assume the answer is no. She looks in the mirror and... <laughs> I mean, what must go through her brain? <laughs> I mean, really, practically perfect in every way? <laughs> A what? This is Bloomberg. A wild first month for Liz Truss's government has seen at least, at least, £300 billion wiped from the combined value of the nation's stock and bond markets. Well, now, uh, much of this is, is really uh, dull uh, finance speak, which I won't bore you with. Boring! Too late. While assets globally have been roiled by central bank efforts to tame surging inflation, confidence in the UK has been shaken. The September sell-off on concerns about the Truss's government's tax cuts saw the pound hit a record low against the dollar, intervention by the Bank of England, and a humiliating government climb down amid questions over credibility. The feedback we get from investors is that they consider the UK uninvestable as long as there is such government chaos, says uh, some bloke from uh, Liberum Capital, a strategist. And then there's just a lot of stuff about, you know, FTSE 350 and FTSE 250 and gilts and inflation link gilt indexes, and I've got no idea what any of that means. Just keep that headline figure in mind. So far, and they've only been, <laughs> they've barely got their knees under the table, and they've already lost us 300 billion pounds. Good work, Liz. Thank you. In the wake of the sell-off, says Bloomberg, value is starting to emerge in UK stocks. And you should be very, very alarmed about that. Warning, warning. It means that this country is has got a for sale sign up. All of our stuff is cheap, which means that foreigners can come in and pick off anything that's still ours. I mean, can you think of anything that is still actually properly British? Practically nothing that you can think of that you would assume to be British actually is. Bloomberg says some investors are seeing opportunities to build positions. There is a feeling that stocks are starting to look very cheap, luring some opportunistic investors back to the market, said uh, one uh, trader. It just, just when you think it couldn't possibly get any worse, it does. They'll call it inward investment. They'll call it Britain being open for business. Well, <laughs> I guess so, in much the same way as a car parked by the side of the street is open for anybody to nick its wheels. To strip it for parts. Harrow. Hello, Jonathan. Uh, Nick, hello. C can I say something that... Uh, okay, I'll begin by saying that I will vote for Keir Starmer, okay? Right. But, but <laughs> now, I must say this. I think a lot of people now, the new Labour sort of uh, fanboys, are, are saying that, oh, we love it. It's wonderful. It? But in reality, what, people what are just... Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean, it? They love it? Like, no, it, as in the, the Labour movement, resurgency. Oh. Yes. You know? They're saying, they're talking about it as if it's a 97 with Blair or a 92 with the Clinton. But in reality, the reason that conservative numbers are plummeting is because, no offense, but the Truss and Kwartang are both idiots. <laughs> and, <laughs> None taken. <laughs> okay. But, but it's that thingy of where you're just, you're going to the other ups and just because the people in charge are so awful. And right. you'd be... It's similar with, because I was watching this evening, and I'll, I'll have to finish watching it, I was watching an excellent film by uh, Lawrence Fox about the Bidens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lawrence Fox is an excellent actor, and he's a bit right-wing, but also in America... Oh, I Lawrence think, Fox, is that what you said? Oh, right, okay, so that sort of passed me by. I didn't quite understand what you were saying there. So, uh, right, what do you want to watch you know, that for? The, the, you know, you know who I mean, the blondie chap who always says... Yeah, I know, I know, yeah, I know who he is, yeah. He's, he's, he's doing a film about the Hunter Biden. And okay, I, I that's know, great. I know, you're being sarcastic. Yeah, a little bit. It's, it's, is it a film that's titled What About? What about this and what about that? Have I got that my right? Point, yeah, my point just, is just that about, in, yeah. 
But in, in America also, the people, the only reason a lot of people, I, I have a couple of friends in America, mm -hmm. people voted for, even Republicans I know, they voted for Biden just because Trump's such an idiot and con man and corrupt gangster. It's not like they were, oh, we love Biden. Because Clinton, if you remember, the man, Bill Clinton, he was, he was so charismatic, handsome, he could speak, he could all of this. And now with Kia Starmer, Angela Arena, this new uh, shadow home secretary for the Labour Party, they're all just a bit beige and a bit dull. Angela Rayner is beige? No, she, oh my God, I would, oh my God, I just, when I see her on the TV, I just switch the channels, you know? Right, why, why do you do that? Just her and Jess Phillips are just like, ng, 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 like this, you know, they're <laughs> attacking your neck. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. <laughs> Cheers, mate. What about this and what about that? Oh, it's painful. Peter Hitchens, author, broadcaster and columnist for the Mail on Sunday, joined me earlier. I started by asking him what he made of the Home Secretary's wish to upgrade cannabis to a Class A drug. Well, it's just political grandstanding. It's completely empty. The, the grade which you apply to the drug has very little effect if the police are not actually taking any action to prosecute its possession. And really, the marijuana has been a more or less decriminalized drug in the eyes of the police since the 1990s. They've almost entirely given up in subsequent years uh, bothering to arrest uh, or, or uh, refer to Crown Prosecution Service people who are caught in possession. It, in that time, it's gone down to being a Class C drug and back up again to being a Class B drug, but that's made very little difference in, in any case. So it, 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 its current status, uh, it, the maximum sentence for possession is five years in prison and an unlimited fine, but I think you'll find anybody ever gets anything remotely uh, resembling that if they're prosecuted at all. The, uh, the police introduced without bothering to consult Parliament, I think, or the cannabis warning many years ago, uh, which basically licensed them, in fact, they licensed themselves to let people go. So the, the, the real problem is that we have a criminal justice system which doesn't really take marijuana possession seriously. The other ludicrous thing is well above and statement is calling it a gateway drug, as if somehow or other it, it wasn't a very serious drug in itself. The, the real problem with marijuana, which anybody who knows anything about it now understands, is that the correlation between its use and quite severe mental illness is very serious. And in certain subsets of crime, uh, which, are, which are well studied, and these particularly rampage killings and terrorism, such as the Bataclan killing in Paris and, and, and other things of that kind, uh, you will find that the, the number of people who are, who've been engaged in these crimes is, uh, uh, and who are also long-term users of marijuana is, is worryingly high. And we don't know whether this correlation exists in, in, in wider crime because no one's done the study. But the... the, the Media coverage of such crimes, including, I have to say, the recent uh, the recent Uvalde shooting in Texas, uh, repeatedly shows that the perpetrators of such crimes are, in fact, long-term marijuana users. So one has to wonder whether, in other less studied areas of crime, this might be a problem as well. It's a very it's a very worrying drug, and psychiatrists are increasingly concerned about its its, its long-term effects. So call it a gateway drug, as if it was something that people laid aside to take something more serious. It's actually to, to minimise rather than, than, than to emphasise its difficulty. Well, then you surely must be against the sale of alcohol, because that has uh, very close links with um, mental health problems. I am against the sale of alcohol, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's, it's, been, in, it's, it's been legal for, for thousands of years, and it's irreversibly so. Uh, and I would very much like to return to the 1915 alcohol licensing laws, which, which greatly restricted its use until the Middle Ages, when the combination of Tory and Labour governments got rid of all the restrictions on alcohol. But it's, it, it, it's absolutely not an argument uh, in favour of legalising another dangerous poison uh, to point out that we already have a dangerous poison in our midst. It, the, the lesson of alcohol is surely we don't need to legalise any more dangerous poisons. We've got quite enough the trouble in our society. But the, as you just said, the uh, the p legal position of the drug bears no relation to the number of people that are taking it. So what, what is the point of making it illegal with all the extra problems that that would cause? People don't know what they're taking until they've taken it. Minute, they, have to it go, they have to go and buy it from criminals. Uh, if we just cleaned that entire uh, trade up and made it legal, then a lot of the problems that are associated what trade with... Are you talking, what, what trade are you talking about? You've, you've switched from marijuana to alcohol. Are you back on marijuana now? 
Well, yeah, uh, well, uh, okay, mar- mar- right. well, alcohol is... Uh, if if, 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 I'm saying that if we actually did, as we used to do before the early 1970s, and prosecuted the possession of marijuana properly, uh, then there would be much less use of it. And this is demonstrated in, in two highly civilized, free and law-governed countries, namely Japan and South Korea, which have not abandoned attempts to prosecute uh, possession and continue to do so, and have, as a result, in my view, much lower use. We just won't do this. We, the Britain used to do the same thing as they do and, and, and do so very effectively with the uh, very uh, heavily financed and, uh, and uh, establishment-supported campaign uh, got going in the late 1960s to, to weaken the laws against marijuana. And uh, that was successful. And as a result, the prosecutions of it and a, and a really serious attempt to deal with its possession has not taken place since then. But well, it, I, d- it, I don't really it, understand it would your... Work ar- it would I don't, work if it were tried. But forgive me, I don't really understand your argument at all then against making it a Class A drug, which would then increase the penalties, it would increase the jail time, it would focus the police's mind well, on dealing with this issue. You, you seem to be arguing... Well, let, let, let me explain it two again. Ways. It doesn't, I, I'm not against it. It's just, it's just, it's just irrelevant to uh, political, uh, p- political bilge. It's it, the... the, the classification of the drug is basically the the penalties which are applied if you prosecute people for possessing it. If you don't prosecute people for possessing it, if you've never used a death penalty, it would make any difference. I'm not, by the way, suggesting that we should. The, the level of penalty is irrelevant if the law is not enforced. Peter Hitchens, uh, speaking to me earlier. Bromley. Hello, Luke. Hi again, Nick. Luke. Hope you're well. Um, before I get on to my point of uh, 45p, 40p, uh, you're right about the, the hours. I, 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 I mean, you say who, 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 it doesn't matter if it gets a bit dark in, in the morning. In fact, quite honestly, you can get two hours darker. Uh, I don't think it really matters because we've got street lighting. Um, well, maybe, maybe not if fresh have their way. But, um, and, uh, yeah, so... It's just an hour that you can't do anything with. Who who bounds out of bed an hour early in order to enjoy more light in the morning? You don't. You crawl out of bed. You're, every fibre of your being wanting you to stay in bed and gra- grab more sleep. And so you're rubbing this, the sleep out of your eyes as you're stumbling about yeah. the bathroom. It doesn't matter whether it's light out or uh, light outside or not, but in the evening... You can do no yes. end of things with an extra hour oh, of yes. light. You could tend your allotment, you could go running, you could walk the dog. Go to restaurants, eating out. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I've been to, I've been to uh, Lapland um, and, uh, you know, there, when I went to, at the time, it was like um, there was only about half an hour to an hour darkness every night. Right. And, and that's quite, quite surreal. Well, I don't think I'd like you, that. <laughs> well, it's only yeah, but the other the other, the other end of the year in the summer, it's complete darkness. Um, or, yeah, and you only have an hour hour, hour of light. So yeah, you're shopping shopping in the darkness. In the I light. don't know why anybody would want to live there. Why would anybody want to live well, there? Not many people do. Well, that's true. Yeah, but the ones that do do. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny because I said, "What sort of crime do you have there?" And they said, "Well." The, the sort of crime we have is people writing rude words on on the snow and on people's cars and windows. Wow. But well. That's the worst it gets, because you know you don't have gangs. I don't want to. Uh, so I'm just getting cold. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's blooming freezing outside, so I imagine that uh, sort of cuts down on crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't, they don't hang out. They just, yeah, you know, they they, they have these. Uh, uh, motorbike things. Plus, uh, everybody knows place. everybody else in Lapland. I mean, how many people live in Lapland? It's about three, something like that. Everybody knows yeah. everybody else. They all know their uh, business. It's Father Christmas lives out there. Does he? Apparently. Well, I hope you've been good. Yeah. Now, that you sounds know, like, know. wait a minute, that sounds like a no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good. I'm a man of integrity in the world. Okay, then. I don't know. I try to be. I'm, I'm not perfect, but I, I try to be. Claw so. back ground that you just lost there, Luke. But all right, then. <laughs> we'll believe you. Okay, so now, the 45p. Uh, it's received a lot of negativity. Um, of, of, of why it should go to 40p. Yeah. I want to ask you, can you see any benefits of it? And I, I mean, you know, for the for the average person who wouldn't actually see it, um, do you think there are any benefits? Oh, any benefits of cancelling it or having it? Of having it. Can I see any benefits of having a 45p tax rate for everything that you earn above £150,000? Is that what you're asking me? Yes, because I can, so I'm interested to see if you can. Can I think so, of any benefits for having that tax rate? Uh, for the people who don't own it. 
Well, yeah, because it would bring in more taxes to spend on the services that people that don't earn it would uh, perhaps need. Yeah. It's received a lot, of, a lot of criticism. And yet it was actually one of the smallest uh, parts of the budget. Yeah, it makes almost no difference whatsoever to the uh, to, to the enormous amount of uh, money that they are, uh, well, I was going to say gambling, but it's not really a gamble because they can't possibly believe still after all the evidence that trickle-down economics doesn't work. Yeah. So it's not really a gamble, they're just chucking our money away. Well, does it not work? Because, I mean, I, I work in construction. Mm. Um, on the smaller end, I'm one of the contractors, if you like, in terms of the company itself, yeah, cleaning company, yeah. basically. Um, and so I, I'm talking to like big developers, um, and yes, they make the multi millions and things, and we make the thousands. Yeah. But if, if they didn't make those decisions, the amount of people, I mean, you know, I, I, I take on, uh, I help lots of mothers back into work and things, that wouldn't happen if these big guys didn't make those big decisions and the big deals all over London, where we're based. Um, but what's that got to do with the 45p tax rate? Because these people are, are obsessed with money uh, in nice ways. Perhaps I don't judge them as such, but they, you know, they, 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 they really, the penny of the pound, they make a difference. So if mm. they know that, I mean, I was with someone the other day who sold, sold some land a couple of years ago for 100 million pounds. Now, if he, if he knew that he was getting, uh, what, 40, I'm trying to put a difference, uh, another 5 million, or I'm a bit confused over what the percentage would be, but... Yeah. Um, you understand, if he's going to make five million more out of the deal, he's going to go after that deal more. He's going to try and get it done quicker. And mm. obviously that then speeds everyone up. You get no, all the I, I don't buy that. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't no, trickle down. I, it doesn't trickle down. Trickle down economics has never worked anywhere it's ever been tried. Here's, here's the reason why. Okay. People will not stop trying to avoid tax if it is a reduced amount. It's not the level of taxation, it's the amount of money it's levied on. If you earn yeah. £10 million a year, but the tax rate is a mere 10%, you'd think, well, mm -hmm. 10%, that's great. Everybody was, would be happy to pay 10%, but no, they won't. Because if you earn £10 million a year, that's a million pounds in tax. Mm -hmm. They are going to do everything in their power to avoid paying that. And you're right. Yeah. The richer people get, the more obsessed they are with keeping it. It's it's yeah. really weird. It's like the smell of money must do things to people's brains. That the more well, they yeah. have, the more desperate they are to cling on to every last penny of it. One thing I've noticed from these people uh, is that there's never enough money. They always want more. It becomes a game of making money. Yeah. Once you've got millions, I mean. I presume there's not much more that you need in life. No. Except more millions. Right. And then you're, you're, in a new, you're, you're in a new category and you're up against other multimillionaires. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And but, it doesn't stop, it doesn't stop because... with millions either. Billions. It's, st it's still the, ca yeah. the case with billions yeah. because if you've got a hundred foot yacht and you've uh, parked it off the coast of the south of France, then somebody with an even bigger yacht is going to come and park <laughs> in front of your sunset. I, and I must admit, and I know it's only probably poor people that say this, uh, but it, it, they don't seem any happier, do they? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Precisely yeah. right. Yes. Happiness. H-A-P-P-Y-ness. That should be the goal. Not this, uh, this demented um, chasing after cash for its own sake. Here's how out of uh, whack life is. We spend almost all of our waking hours doing something we don't want to do for people that don't appreciate us or pay us enough in order to pay the bills on the credit cards that we've racked up buying stuff we don't need. Tell me that's not a life out of balance. The whole world's gone insane. Joining us now to discuss this and what it could mean for Liz Truss and whether the Conservatives are choosing popularity over prosperity is Harry Phibbs, who is the journalist for Conservative Home. Hello, Harry. Hello. Well, it's been a month. What a month. I mean, not even really a month. It's just a couple of weeks because uh, two of those weeks that Liz Truss has been in power were uh, at stop because of the Queen's funeral. How do you think it's going so far? Oh, I think that it's it's far too early for people to write off um, Liz Truss. I think it's ridiculous, actually, for people to say, oh, that, uh, her policies have uh, failed because of the pound going up or down after the mini-budget. Um, of course, it, it, it will be a matter of 
months um, or, or a year, 18 months, we just got two years before the general election. I, I think that um, she's, she's a very determined lady, our new Prime Minister. She's, she's got strong beliefs, strong convictions. She will go ahead um, with being able to get through a lot of her agenda in terms of um, having lower tax and lower regulation. And obviously what she's uh, aiming for is for that to be vindicated with higher economic growth. I mean, I, I happen to think that it will be, that, that that will succeed. But I mean, that will be the, uh, the the verdict, whether it succeeds or not. And that's something for, for, for months or a year, 18 months, rather than, uh, you know, rather than a sort of a couple of weeks. Well, I guess, OK, looking at it on the positive side, if she does manage to create growth from these policies, which so far have done nothing but cost us money, then that growth is not going to come in 18 months, is it? Well, I, I mean, she, uh, you, you, you're certainly right that, that it's, it's a tight schedule. That, I mean, normally, obviously, we get uh, a five-year parliament and, uh, and, and the sort of difficult, unpopular decisions are made, made early on. And then there's the, the, you know, the prime minister today would hope that they would have uh, time to succeed. And she's on a, uh, you know, she's, it's, it's tougher for her. She's on a tighter schedule. But uh, no, my, my own prediction is that, uh, that they will have time to succeed sufficiently for her to be um, vindicated. But, but what's ludicrous is to say at this early stage that, they, that the policies have failed before, they've, before she's had a chance to even implement them. Well, it's kind of like saying that um, we should give the bus driver a chance who's just driven over the, um, the barrier in the middle of a motorway and is going in the wrong direction. Let's, let's just give him another 10 miles and see what happens. Well, I think that, I mean, that, that, <laughs> your, your analysis, but I don't, think, I don't think most people would think that was um, reasonable. I mean, we had, we, had, we had this sort of idea that because the pound went down a few cents and the sort of this, uh, the guilt market went down and then, and then that, that was then turned around in a few days, that that, you know, somehow great um, significance. I mean, uh, the, what we need to do is, 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 is wait and, uh, and, and see what happens um, next year and the year after. I mean, I, I, I appreciate she's only got a couple of years, but I, I, would, I would think that that probably is enough time, given the um, determination and the boldness to make some really big changes and her, uh, and her uh, confidence that we will, we will see enough of that before the next election. But, you know, that, then people will decide, won't they? Do you not feel that people have already decided? It's, it's very difficult to overcome an initial instinct that people get about a person. We've made our mind up. She's the least popular prime minister in history. Well, I, I, I mean, if, in 2019, we had the Euro elections uh, in the summer to when the Conservatives got 9%. Then a few months later, they had a landslide victory. I mean, you might have thought that that in, in June 2019, people had made their minds up that the, that the Conservatives were a disaster and Conservatives were, were you know, were, were, were doomed. Um, and obviously that, that then turned out to be quite dramatically wrong. I mean, I do think that uh, people, which in a way is healthy, people are willing to um, change their minds now the, the, in, in, in politics. People aren't just sort of settled in, into voting the same way that their parents voted or or, or voting according to class or according to where you know where they're from or according to the color of their skin i think people people are looking m much more critically now and that that means that that people do often shift their um views from from one party to another in relatively um, short periods of time and you know in some ways i think that's a good thing i guess the initial reaction that people have had to Liz Truss's policies, of course none of which anybody other than Conservative members voted for, it's almost the exact opposite in many cases of what they did think was uh, attractive about the Conservative manifesto under Boris Johnson, Liz Truss is charging in the opposite direction. Well, the, the idea that people have got about it is that she's not really interested in the vast majority of us, that she is uh, addressing her policies to, I guess you'd call it the donor class. Oh, well, look, I think that's complete nonsense. And you've got no evidence for that. I mean, in terms of the manifesto, uh, the, the, the Conservatives had a low tax uh, manifesto in 2019. I think you could perfectly, fairly argue that Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak breached that in terms of putting up 
national insurance. And so she's getting it sort of back on track with what people voted for in 2019. But no, she's a- a- absolutely concerned about economic growth because that's of general benefit to everybody. It's not, it, 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 it's, a, it's a complete misunderstanding that um, economic growth is something that's just for the benefit of the rich. I mean, you might, you might well have less equality. You might well have the rich getting um, much richer. But then if the poor are getting richer as well, even if, there's, uh, even if the gap is widening, the, that, that's, that's a benefit uh, to, 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 to the population as a whole. I mean, that's, it's, you know, in a way, it's going back to some of these arguments uh, about freedom versus equality that, that, that people haven't had for a while. So I think that, that you know, there's a, that, I mean, there is a bit of a uh, sort of moral, philosophical argument that, um, that, that, that the Conservatives are putting forward with greater confidence than they perhaps have in previous, uh, you know, in, in previous years since Margaret Thatcher's time. So I think that that is a challenge that some of these arguments people might be unfamiliar with. Uh, so, so that's a sort of battle that she's, that she's going to have to have. But I think probably more than the intellectual argument, it will be looking at the results. You know, people might, might be pessimistic and might be doubtful about it, but they'll judge her on the results. And if she gets the results, if she gets an increased standard of living, um, strong economic growth, then I think that will um, reasonable, fair-minded, you know, sort of floating voters will think, OK, well, we might have had some doubts about it, but look, she's uh, been vindicated, and, um, uh, uh, and, and, and so, you know, good for her. Well, I mean, you talk about growth, but, but growth is, um, is unequally spread. Those that have, have more. Those that have little, get nothing. And the way that she's sort of set out her, uh, her position is that I mean, we just have to look at the specifics. She was for reducing the 45p tax rate. She's for uh, taking the bonus um, restrictions from bankers. She's against people on low income asking for more. In fact, those that do are lefty, activist, militant enemies of the people. So we've got a really clear idea of the direction of travel here, and it's not in favour of... 90, 95 percent of the population. Oh, she's perfectly clear, and 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 the budget makes clear that it was it was for tax cuts for the for everyone, you know, for the uh, tax cuts for the rich and tax cuts. Yeah, but, but um, tax, tax, cu- tax, tax cuts, cuts for, the for the rich. But tax cuts in general benefit the rich sub- substantially more than they benefit the poor. Well, they. I mean, obviously, if people if, if people are paying more tax than. A tax cut is of is of greater greater benefit, but of course, when George Osborne cut the top rate of tax from fifty percent to forty five percent, and there was you know quite a bit of controversy about that at the time, uh, what what actually resulted was that the tax revenue increased, and uh, so so that's a that's a benefit in terms of public services. That you know it's it's, it's a it's a paradox, but that was a statistical reality that there was more revenue to pay for public services and obviously that also then eases the pressure on on the rest of us with our um tax bills so i think the well you can say that you, the, that's, that's a bit of a it's, it's a it's an odd reading of the statistics though isn't it because you you reduce tax and then over a while the general gdp of the country goes up and therefore you can draw the logical conclusion that it's the tax cut what did it but it's just oh, not necessarily no, no, no. It's absolutely so matter of fact you can look it up the, the, the those people paying the top rate tax uh, provided ex, uh, provided eight billion of extra revenue to the exchequer when the rate of tax was cut from 50 percent to 45 percent and it might be counterintuitive uh, but but you know that that was that was the reality that if if we're competitive uh, for, for for rich people compared to other countries if if there's less um, benefit in looking for tax avoidance or um, uh, uh, tax, you know, tax dodging, if people are rewarded more for doing work, then you end up with extra revenue. Well, well, so well I think... You can, you, can say, you can say that you believe in equality and therefore, yeah, the, you want the, the rich people all to, to, to go abroad. We don't want rich people here. But on the whole, it's actually beneficial to the rest of us to have rich people and to have them paying tax and to make sure that there's a proper system of incentives. Now, where I would agree is that that also should apply to people on, uh, you know, the other end of the scale. And I think that the welfare 
benefits should be should be reformed in such a way to ensure that people are rewarded for being in work rather than on welfare in terms of the universal credit uh, taper. So, you know, I absolutely agree that the the principle should apply to, uh, you know, the, the, the poor as well as the rich to be given an incentive. I mean, I guess the... the your your argument is held under the waterline by what you just said. You said compared to other countries, if we have a competitive tax, by competitive you mean that the well-off pay less tax, if we have a lower tax rate, then we will be better off. If that's true, why don't other countries do that? Oh, well, they do. I mean, in terms of the United States, for example, the, 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 the top rate of tax, I mean, you go up to... Um, you, to, to, to a million dollars and then it's sort of even at that level it's at um, I think 37 percent so uh, at, at the, uh, you know the 45 percent tax rate is um, you know is high it's much higher than it was for nearly all the time of uh, Tony Blair and, and Gordon Brown it, it actually loses revenue rather than makes revenue it sends out a, uh, you know, a message of hostility towards um, success and I'm you know, and I'm sorry that, that, that that's been uh, Compromise that that uh, um, Liz Truss has made. I think that it, the economics of it were sensible, and it's obviously been um, there's been in the retreat on that in terms of the politics of it. But I also think that the overall agenda uh, of moving towards um, free enterprise and, and wealth creation in a smaller state, I, you know, I do think that that uh, will be pursued and is being pursued, and and uh, that that will deliver results not just for the rich but for the country as a whole i mean it may be that we're it may be that we're less equal i mean there's talk about the the cake it may be that um you know rather than focusing on redistribution and you know getting you know different slices of the cake the thing is to get a bigger cake to get more wealth and that may mean that there's less equality but that but that of everybody including the poor are, are better off <laughs> So you um, you subscribe to trickle down economics. That's what you're really talking about, isn't it? Trickle down economics. Let the rich um, keep more of their money, and then they will munificently scatter that wealth down to the rest of us. Um, trickle down economics, as you probably know, is, an, is a parody, an invented phrase, a sort of straw man. No, but, that, but that's ever, what you're talking ever about. Put forward but nobody it, has put forward trickle down economics. You won't be able to tell me who has actually said I believe in trickle down economics. Well, nobody has. Ronald, Ronald, Ray, has Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher and Liz they Truss. They absolutely did not. And, you don't, and, and I, I, I would challenge you to produce a quote from Ronald Reagan or Margaret Thatcher or anyone else saying that they believe in trickle down economics. What what actually is about is is incentivizing. Uh, uh, people to be successful and to invest and to create right, but, but that's what we're about... But that's what you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, we, we know what trickle-down economics means. I mean, it doesn't really matter whether they uttered the phrase. We know what we're talking about, and that's what you're, that's what you're uh, subscribing to. Uh, trickle-down economics is a, is a left-wing propaganda nonsense term because it implies that you're simply wanting, um, relying on the rich to use existing money to... to, to be, so the government will give them money and then, and then they no, will... No, it isn't. Spend it's, it's, spend it on land it, it's reducing, the, it's, reducing the, it's reducing it's precisely what Liz Truss is talking about, reducing the amount of tax that the rich pay in order that they will invest and pay their workers more and uh, all of this sort of thing, that the money well, will, the, the, the the we, money will eventually... Wealth. It's, not, it's not about it, but it's about increasing the amount of wealth in society, increasing the investment in society, and it would also apply not just to the rich, but, but to, 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 to all incomes, to have more incentives and to have a creation of wealth. Now, the, I mean, the, 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 using the term trickle-down economics is, is a, is, is, it's a dishonest phrase because it's not, any, it's not a phrase that any free market economist has ever put forward, and it's a, it's a misleading way of looking at it. I, well, I don't think it's misleading at all. It's, it's just another way of saying what you're talking about. All right. Well, look, do you accept that nobody, no free market economist has ever used that phrase? Well, of course I don't accept it. Name me all of the free market economists in the world and I'll call them up. It's a ridiculous thing to ask. Well, uh, can, you, can, you, can you give me an example of any um, libertarian or conservative politician or economist who has actually, actually said that what they want is for um, the rich to, to, to have tax cuts purely so they can, with their existing amount of money, uh, be able to spend more on 
servants and Lamborghinis and uh, I mean it's, no, it's, not, it's, not, it's, ser- not servants it's, and Lamborghinis that now you're being ridiculous but th- by doing the exact thing that you just said investing more and creating uh, more jobs and etc and so on that's that's yes. what that uh, is about yes and so it's not it's not about the existing amount of money um, well, I, 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 I didn't. About I didn't. Extra money, extra wealth, extra investment, and it's not just for the, for that to be an opportunity for for big business or for rich people, right. but for businesses generally okay, and, so, for the, and for population as a well, whole. Then I would ask you why in this country we have a problem with research and development. We do not invest in our own businesses. That's because when people who earn a certain amount can employ buildings worth of accountants to make sure that they pay as little tax as possible, well, they do not then reinvest it in their businesses. They invest it in their uh, private accounts in the British Virgin Islands. It just disappears. It just vanishes from the country. That's what happens. Which is a very good argument for us to have lower corporation tax rather than higher corporation. I mean, actually, corporation tax, well, the budget simply cancelled a plan to increase it, which would have been um, very foolish, to have in- uh, better... Uh, tax allowances so there's more incentives um, for, for more rewards for people to invest if that if that succeeds and so they take the risk and it is profitable to make it easier to have less regulation to make it easier for people to start up new businesses and expand new businesses and that's absolutely uh, of course of course people have been discouraged from um, investing if, if they're not uh, if you know, and taking that risk, if, if there's no reward, no reward. Really, it's e- it's an either or. That <laughs> you, you either get to keep all or nothing, and there's there's zero in between. Well, now we we've, we've been we've been through this so many times. Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher started this. President Trump sold his tax cuts as rocket fuel for the economy. It had absolutely no effect whatsoever. The tax cuts that Reagan uh, introduced had no effect whatsoever. This isn't me saying, this is the London School of Economics. They examined five decades of tax cuts in 18 wealthy nations, and they found that they consistently benefited the wealthy and had no meaningful effect on unemployment or economic growth. Well, what we had was in the 1980s under, under, under Reagan and Thatcher, much higher economic growth um, than, we've had, than we've had since. So, I mean, those policies were successful. I mean, and, and obviously Reagan and Thatcher got the um, electoral reward for that. Um, so I, I, I think that if you look around, I mean, it's not just in history, but if you look around countries now that have, um, that, that have small state, low tax, low regulation um, uh, economies mm. in, in, in Europe, for example, Ireland, um, Poland, uh, Hungary, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, those are the countries that are getting high economic growth. Right, so we, and the country, yeah, but from, and a, the from, a much, do, from a much lower rate, so we should be more like Estonia? Well, they're, they're, they're achieving, I mean, obviously they've... Estonia they've, 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 has got a 20% inflation rate, Harry. They've, Harry, they've, they've, I'm, I'm, I'm up seven minutes past the break. It has been entertaining, but I'm going to have to leave it there, but thanks very much. Harry Phibbs from Conservative Home. The Wirral. Hello, Nora. Hiya, Nick. Nora. Right. I bow to few broadcasters as low as I bow to the master that is Nick Aberton. Guess who said that? You did, just now. Yeah, because I was quoting... You were, no? you were quoting O'Brien. me. No, no, oh, James O'Brien. Well, James I'm O'Brien was... Uh, James O'Brien should stop drinking at work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nora.